could you can end you can end the stream honestly. I'm confused. Like, are they gonna? Welcome everybody to the MG League as uh, we've been waiting patiently for NA versus EU to get into the showdown here and man oh man Stento and Blitz have been working hard 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 behind the scenes. We're looking right here to start off the day here as everybody walks in the door. This is the European team leagues here split into groups which unfortunately we weren't able to have multiple groups but we did put them into separate groups. It is only going to be one lobby for the EU teams however. So starting right off the bat group. A and B will just be one lobby, but we've got Toxics, RMV, Nitrous Esports, K7, Torch, Ace, Tenetic One, Retired Sinners, Edge, Euro, Toxic Esports on the other side. Picked out Code Red Gaming, Relax, Team Zealous, WC, and then of course the new Platinum 7 Gaming Squad representing for EU. As we switch our way over, let's see who we got representing for NA as North American Prize Pool. Breaking it down, we've got console killers, toxic, lady lasers, and we got a lot of toxic players here. So, man, it's going to be one crazy lobby if you ask me. Um, main gaming, affinity, prison inmates, the dub hub, torch, ascension. Running in uh, for group B, we've got bloodhounds, shooters instinct, Eno, another toxic squad, phase nine, one eight sevens, the seven kings, and another RMV representing for North America. TDT for the Dream Team, Abnormals in the Crazy Mob, Winner's Circle, So Strong Gaming, Gemini, Vig, and Rico's Roughnecks for Group C here. Quite a few names we all know and love in NA representing today. And as we switch over, this is the prize pool breakdown, everybody. We've got North America, first place prize going for $250, second place $150, third and fourth, both at $50 on both ends of the match. So North America and Europe ready to play this in. And man, let me tell you, they've been grinding hard they've had a lot of competitions put in the works here and this is one of the biggest console competitions that has been put on and again hats off to Stento and blitz doing all the work behind we are ready to get into match number one here as the plane is in the air so we're going to get ourselves over in as we get talk to the map rotation real quick we start the day with erangale two times switching back over to miramar two times and then we end the day on the beautiful greeny map of erangale so not to hold you guys up any longer. I know the lobby is underway. The plane is rocking. It's riding. It's rolling. We've got so many other um, opportunities to win and money to be made. Let's get Stento. Let's get Blitz in here, and let's get you guys the main attractions for the day. Let's go. Thank you very much, CC. Very professional having CC bring us into game one of day one for the MG 
NA versus EU showdown. It's unbelievable that we're finally here after so much work behind the scenes. A big shout out to Stento and Main Gaming for doing so much preparation behind the scenes here and Cold Crew Exclusive for joining us here. This is our first game. Again, this is for EU next few matches. We'll have five matches will be for EU and then tonight we'll be back for NA and that is going to be the structure of the tournament through Monday through Wednesday over the next month while we work through the regular season into the playoffs and then into our finals. And here we had our first flight path from Severny to the Milta Power area. And let's welcome in Stento as well. What's up, buddy? Excited, Excited to be here as, as always. always. You, you guys know, know how much passion I have for this PUBG, PUBG console scene. Uh, uh, if, if you missed it, we did see a Severny down to Melta Plain Path. It looks like phase one is shifting um, into a very interesting location here, Blitz. Farm is going to be dead center here, so a lot of that island is still into play for a potential shift down to the south. Um, but if you're taking a quick look at the map, it looks wide open, Blitz. I'm not seeing um, too much of a hot drop in any of these locations. Um, these are very experienced EU teams here. Um, it is uh, quite literally a, a pro scene we're dealing with here. Um, you'll recognize a lot of these teams if you are familiar with that EU comp team. Um, and again, the best of the best have stepped up here to take their share of the $5,000 prize pool. Eight of these 17 teams will be moving on to the finals um, in day one, match one. Everyone is excited. There's been a lot of hype building up for this $5,000 event. A larger prize pool than you've seen uh, in a little while. Um, and, and we're just ready to get it going here. Thank you if you're tuning in. We really do appreciate it. And uh, strap your seatbelts in. It's going to be a fun ride tonight. Yeah, absolutely. I want to just quickly apologize that there might have been a brief echo on Sento's voice there, but we fixed that just like 30 seconds into you talking. Uh, we're just going to be getting through a few things here. It's actually unbelievable that we're already into game one because there's just been so many things behind the scenes here uh, for this event. Obviously, we've been having a lot of success with the main gaming weeklies. We took a little bit of a hiatus to prepare for this event and, you know, behind the scenes. There's just so many things that are going on, Stento. It's kind of unbelievable that now we're getting to the action after just so much work behind the scenes and Kudos to all the players for uh, signing up and, you know, kind of clearing their schedules for this event. And I know there's a few other events that are happening out there. So, you know, it's still an exciting time for PUBG Esports, especially on the console side. And this is a crazy first circle. This is actually one of my favorite circles on Erangal Stento because you have the potential to go to the south side. You have potential for a farm finish. It could go to Milta Power. It could be a really tough finish in the lumber area on the east side, kind of where Torch is at. You never know where this is really going to go. And a lot of teams are already in the circle, so it's going to be tough for a few teams here, like results may vary, to rotate it all the way from the top Stento. Yeah, we are jumping on board here with, with RMV, making their rotation from Severny. So we'll keep an eye on them, make sure if um, if that's where they're going to be dropping all the time. Severny's an interesting drop blitz because a lot of those plane paths um, aren't going to really allow you to go to Severny. So if that's their main drop, you, you can be pretty sure that they've got a backup plan for some of those more southern plane paths. So um, RMV is going to be a very interesting team to keep an eye on here as they make these rotations from the northernmost city um, into Circle. And again, this is a very long rotation for them. They got out of that Severny drop pretty quickly here. So we'll keep an eye on them as they rotate here. Um, jumping on board with Winter Circle a little bit, doing a, a bit of rotating themselves. Big Dog is catching up with the rest of the WC squad who seem to have a little bit of a spread um, just to the southwest side of Shelter. Very popular compounds there with the garage buildings um, and a couple other. Uh, they are going to need to be careful, though. T1, that's Tenetic 1, um, up on the hill just to the northwest, kind of looking down. Yeah, I want to track the RLX squad right now because they might be passing over T1. It looks like they're going to go a little bit to the right here and maybe miss it, but then the compound down below here is also taken. It looks like they're kind of trying to scope it out here. Let's see if they spot them. Also, a care package coming down. Looks like they might try to take this dip, but T1 might have heard them by this point. I think Infernix is going to maybe take a look here. Yeah, Infernix is a little bit closer to the action than the rest of the squad. He, he's very far uh, east, uh, excuse me, west southwest of the squad. Um, at that shack, a very popular place to pull up there. Uh, he, so he's going to have a little bit of cover to work with in, in the team. I believe that was RLX that we had our eye on. They're just going to continue rolling towards the south, perhaps take a little bit of um, 
Actually, Blitz, if you do keep an eye on that RLX squad, they pull up to the compound just to the southwest of farm, and they're going to have a package dropping right on them. Yeah, so interesting that there's so many teams trying to travel in this area, but there hasn't really been a major conflict yet. This is a great compound to hold early on next to farm. I've mentioned this in our broadcast before that you rarely see the circle come to this area. It usually shifts just below that compound. And here we have a Garoza, a Grazza, as Wacky Jack, you would say. Pretty close for them to grab it, but they're being pretty patient, Stento. I wonder why. I mean, you, you think you, you could throw a couple smokes there and just grab that pretty easily. Looks like Head Pain might go for that now. He's thinking about it, maybe, or they're just going to go without the smokes. Yeah, I think it's just... Uh, far enough to make them a little bit uncomfortable. They do have two teams close. Edge is in farm, um, and Toxic EU is to the west uh, along that snake side of them. So, um, you know, a, a wrong foot out of place here C could result in, in losing one early, but, you know, get out there quick, get that package is what I always say. I think they're going to get a Groza and get everyone back into this compound, um, which we were talking about a little bit. It's a very popular compound um, there where they're getting that Groza, but it looks like we're... Um, Got some sights from NES onto, I believe that was another uh, toxic team up there as well. Um, something to note about this lobby is there is a um, a toxic EU and a toxic esports. So both are in the lobby. Um, their clan tags should be pretty clear which is which. Uh, but some shots being traded out here. It's actually C.O.R. from a different angle that's going to get a knock onto one of the NES members here. Blitz Rez is down. Um, Nitrous Esports in a little bit of a pinch, I think, from long range here. Yeah, and these shots, where are these shots coming from? From behind, potentially, all the way from Team 16. All the way to the north, yeah. Look at that. Look at this sight line from that distance. You wonder sometimes how these players can hit these accurate shots from that distance, but I don't think they're going to want to move at all here on that. And then also TXC was pretty far away to capitalize on that knock from NES, as Stento mentioned. Here's a little look at the current... Circle, looks like we might have seen two teams get pretty close to each other. We're just outside of Milta here, Stento. I'm going to tap into the perspective of P7 here. Just got hit with a nade. Going to go for a first aid steals here, trying to hang low on the side. Ooh, and it's actually Nata from... from He's got the suppressor on that mini. He's a little bit south of the rest of the squad with a really interesting angle here. I'm, I'm getting into his perspective. He's got the 6x on the mini um and he's got some really accurate shots through the smoke I, I always like to point out that smokes are way thicker on the battlefield and we get a little bit of a treat here to see through them while we're spectating um but nata doing a really good job of, of picking up some good damage through the smoke that it, he pushed someone off of that revive um but it looks like p7 they've got enough members there that they are going to be able to get that revive onto ivix is here and that angle from Nada is still going to play a very important factor here because uh, Platinum 7 has found themselves in a, in a pretty interesting location. It's it's a very tough dip to be playing this early. If teams start to pull up in different location splits, they're going to get um, shots on them from all, all different angles. So it looks like Clyde is leading the boys up here. Um, and now AE's got to be a little bit careful because they got a, a two on four all of a sudden. Yeah, this is smart for P7. I don't know if they know the situation here, but they need to push and work here before the other two members show up. Another nade coming in through this window. Ivix trying to push around with the squad. Steel's also rotating as well. Trying to get the view from No Mercy, who's trying to be the point person in the building. I think they know now that one member, at least of the team, isn't there and is pulling up in the vehicle. No Mercy's trying to yeah, decide if he's going to wrap around back or not. So AE has got to three deep here. They're, they're missing Pio, who is um, actually just showed up on the west side. So now we've got a real good four on four here. Blitz AE is kind of playing the low side ridge. P7 found themselves all combined into the house. Wow. It's a big one on one between Cliff and Steel. Nox are going down on both sides. Blitz, Cliff is down. Arts is down. That's a three on two. It's only Pio and Nata left versus Clyde. Just wow, Clyde and not to that. That did happen really fast. I wanted to kind of tap out of the view there because we had a guy in the roof, people all over the place. I thought the tides were going to shift to AE, but now it's kind of tied up here. Pio's still up, so it's actually a 2v1 stent. So I didn't realize that Pio was still up there and that Clyde's yeah, going to go got for a, a great revive as aerial well. View watching Pio just kind of play the ridge while these revives go off. The thing is, Platinum 7 is getting revives of their own inside. Unfortunately, they have lost one player, but they might be able to get seals up for a second revive here. Clyde has already gotten his first aid off, and um, AE is on their way to getting back to four strong here. So what was 
down to just like one player for each side almost everyone is back up we've only seen one person thirsted out of this fight so uh, a crazy early game fight here but both teams kind of caught in a bad spot on that ridge trying to make the fight happen before the third parties come into play i can't believe this sense of there's so many third party situations going on with all of that only one person dies and ae right now i think is making the right move here stento and just bailing because this compound is a disaster early on there's just not that much cover and i feel like this is the smart move to get out and get back it's to milta for strong rescue mission right they kind of got pulled up on two of their members and they got in there gave it a little scrap and, and successfully extracted their team so staying four deep in match one uh, of this tournament is going to be a something that shouldn't be overlooked right now that was a very good play by them to make sure they keep four deep yeah ultimately you're right for them they didn't lose anybody who's a good extraction mission that was a funny way to put it I, I like that and i'm just checking out the map here we have the circle closing in so much is going on we're just getting into phase two here txc is moving in from the military base we pretty much confirmed that this circle is not going to the military base at this point and right now the spot to be in really is torch has got a great spot a he's got a great spot holding milta rlx has a nice 2-2 split here but i doubt the circle is going to go all the way back this side west yeah that's a great point this this circle has pulled heavy up to the north side there is no chance we're going on to the island as almost all the land has been pulled off right now it's winter circle in, in torch that probably have the best location if, if you want to take a look at this map uh, ladies and gentlemen they both have a little bit of a 2-2 split winter circle and torch both uh veteran teams here but i uh, also seeing a little bit go on on the northwest side blitz we were up there a little bit earlier on the hillside and now it's cor versus euro up on this hillside uh, battling it out is one down for cor two down for euro no simo's gotta make something happen pretty quickly he's gonna go for the thirst but picking up that kill He's gonna need to be careful here. Traves is uh, on the hunt. He knows exactly where he is. Some great peeks from Nocino. Headshots out of him with the ace. Oh, it's a great nade there from one of the members of COR. I believe that was uh, Cocky there. He's gonna get a good nade there. And hopefully COR is gonna be able to get back to three strong here. They're just inside the zone. Smokes are out. So uh, well done there by Code Red Gaming. Uh, a nice nade there to clean up that battle. Uh, Nocino, we're gonna have to keep an eye on him. Those are some really clean picks. Uh, excuse me, peaks there to get some good knocks. So um, a little bit too late. We got there, uh, honestly, Blitz, but some, some good fighting going on in match one of the day. Yeah, I was able to think catch a, most of that action. You're right, great shootings. When you watch stuff like that, you just notice that some of these guys are on another level. And sometimes, you know what it is, is I've noticed that some of the comp players are smart. They'll actually almost like aim at the ground when they're shooting at someone that's peeking because they know that the recoil is going to go up a little bit. Something that's just so hard to do. You kind of have to like train to do that, especially playing in FPP. And these players obviously play mostly FPP, so they're used to it. Um, but, but great fighting there from both teams as we see the circle shift to the east, which it seemed like this is what the circle was going to do here based off how it landed. So this oh, might... This is Go ahead, Blitz. I was going to say, this is a dreaded circle. So I was saying this is one of my favorite circles. This is one of my least favorite endings to that circle, though. Because anytime you have the circle end outside of Milta here or in the hills, there's just not a lot of cover other than the trees. This valley kind of area becomes an absolute disaster. And I, I think that's where we're going to see the circle today. But obviously, we still got some time to tell. Yeah, absolutely. Um, something I want to point out, if you do take a look at your map, I just watched... K7 do a rotation across the beach. So they're hanging out on that southeast side, a very popular place to play out of on that hill there. And you can kind of push into those buildings there as we're watching Kizza kind of take as much real estate as he can here, pushing into the northeast side of Milty. He's going to grab whatever buildings he can and get a little bit of a stronghold for his squad. AE, um, we saw them do a very nice job of, of kind of pulling out of that fight. And they've gotten some of the best zone now um, after that survival. So Keep a close eye on AE. We've seen them already get into a little bit of a scrap and kept four up. And there's a lot going on. Wow, here the northwest side, there's there's like three teams rotating oh really gosh. close to one another here. And we have a team just took the emergency pickup. Our first one, I think, of the day. This is TXEU who's going to land on the northeast side. The only thing though is Stento, the northeast side is already taken by RS and KO here. So when they land, I mean, they might get this care package landing in the woods, but they're gonna have a really tough uphill battle, battle literally and metaphorically here after they get this care package. Let's take a look at what it is. An arm here for TXEU. That's Toxic EU. 
Yeah, I believe that's going to go into the hands of Chap. Considers himself one of the best bolties out here on console. And as you can see, that belongs to him. Just to uh, just to his east, excuse me, west side once again. That RS squad has a little bit of a spread, and they're looking down at this this KO team that is in the lumber yard. Um, that's kind of been resorted to these two buildings here. But um, Marco's hanging out on the rocks, and now we're having a third team. That's T1 kind of join the lumber lumber yard situation. So we'll have to keep a, a close eye on this blitz because there's a lot going on in this area with these four teams all kind of huddled in um and the main thing to point out none of them is inside a zone yeah this is really interesting they're so close the zone as you just mentioned just went back to milta we have three teams on the bottom i heard you kind of mention that there was some interesting stuff happening here by the bridge so it's really hard to switch do we watch the bridge action here nes is getting so close to txc here rlx is going to have to move in as well yeah, it's got it. It's, there's a crash happening on uh, TXC here. NES Slayers starts it off with the headshots out of the AK. Oh, with Benjo the almost trade. got two down, but then gets knocked, and they're eliminated. Wow, that happened quick. Blitz, NES, Nitrous Esports. Um, with an impressive play there, there was knocks going out pretty quickly, but the uh, four-man spread of Nitrous Esports is going to take down TXC. Uh, that's our second team gone. We still have 15 teams alive, 57 players blitz as we cross the 17-minute mark here. Oh, yeah, and on the very top, RS right now is getting knocked by CES. What's tough about this is CES is so close to the edge of zone. They have a really long way to move in here. They already have two down on PIP. Or RS, excuse me. But Circle's moving in a minute and a half here. Traits just yeah, knocked the one of their teammates. The squad wasn't even originally in this battle. I missed how they kind of caught up uh, with the rest of these squads here, but... It is kind of just mutual destruction all over the map right now. ZES is being held out by this RS squad. Um, and, and Mercurial is doing all he can here to kind of wrap with ghosts away from that gatekeep. Um, Flo is, is way in the zone. He's going to have to take his time and kind of hope that he's got enough heals here. As the rest of the ZES boys continue to put down some shots to push back RS. Um... Blitz, there's a lot of waiting here. Code Red Gaming is fighting versus Tenetic 1, and they do a clean work there. Cocky and Keebs are going to uh, get out of there as a two-man. Yeah, I saw they were uh, fighting. they got six kills already. I saw they were both kind of entering this compound, but I knew that RS was going to kind of come above them here. Keebs is also already getting ready for RS to come down this hill. Tried to go for the repick. Did not happen from Keebs. He's got a nade cooked right now. He's also getting shot from the left. The nade's going to go nowhere. He needs his teammate here, Kaki, to help out. But he's actually going back to the build and kind of leaving Keeps by himself. Yeah, this is a tough situation. The zone is right on the back, and that's going to do it. Keeps goes down. It's down, it's down to just Kaki for Code Red Gaming here. He's got a three-man of Team 11 pushing down from the north side. But he's got help from ZES. Mercurial with a knock onto Spree. And that thirst comes out immediately from Kaki. So picking up another point for Code Red Gaming there is very valuable stuff here as just a one-man. So heads up play there. I'm the member of COR, Team 16 hanging strong as just a one man. RS continuing to wrap away to the west side. They've got two strong, um, and ZES is only two strong as well. So broken teams here, um, picking up whatever points they can on the north side of Zone Blitz. A lot is happening as well in Milta um, and on the edges of Zone. RLX is rotating. Torch is just sitting comfortable center zone in the meantime, Blitz. Yeah, Torch has such a good spot here. One of the... Kind of go-to compounds in this area. Everybody knows this little building here, the garage building place here. We already got a person on the roof. That's Koyami here. Everybody kind of situated, probably checking out all the different shots. We also haven't really tapped into Milta, as Sento mentioned. We have WC and K7 both there. And we are going to see the rest of AE crash there as well. Yeah, a lot just happened on your kill feed. You're going to notice Nitrous Esports took out platinum seven so some big kills going out to nes here early in the game uh you're just watching kill after kill drop on your kill feed wow so many people exactly. every time we switch somewhere everybody's getting killed this has just been really i think i think that northeast side blitz toxic eu um with a little bit of help from the broken teams on the north side they're actually picking up those kills onto rlx it's uh, been a quiet round, right? Oof. We haven't watched a lot of Toxic EU here, Blitz, but they have seven kills already. And they're wrapping the north side. They hear these shots. Uh, Swift is leading the way. He's got full right behind him. 
Let's get into his perspective. It looks like they're going to try to push up here, clear out everything so then they can focus on the bottom side of this map, which I mentioned, you know, when Circle goes here, it's going to be pretty difficult. Swift's got a great wrap, but then lost view of Ghost, and then Ghost peeks out in the tree, knocks him immediately. Swift was by himself, though. They also oh, lost Shaft. Unfortunately, he second-guessed who he wanted to shoot at. He had, he had the drop on one, but as his teammate got knocked, he kind of second-guessed himself there. Um, it's going to work out for Toxic E here, picking up a couple kills. Um, unfortunately, I don't think they needed to lose Swift there. He had a great flank, but um, again, he kind of second-guessed who he was going to shoot at there. And unfortunately, um, he, he paid for it. But Toxic E, you having an amazing uh, start here to this first match of the tournament. They've got nine kills already, Blitz. Seven teams alive, 23 players as we get to the 22-minute mark. It was... Uh, a lot happened in, in the course of the last five minutes. We went from 57 players down to 22 in, in about one shift. Yeah, that was really hectic. So hard to follow that, but you just saw a constant action in the kill feed. And we're taking a look here at NES, who's trying to hold this little ridge by the street. Then we have, obviously, three teams in Milta. It's WC, AE, and K7. I'm assuming that the circle is going to leave Milta. It might stay here again. Sometimes the circle sticks to Milta for a while, but then it will eventually leave Milta. So his teams might be okay for a little while longer, but we'll see. Yeah, it left Milta, but actually AE is still in. So the two-man squad is still going to be in the last remaining building here. And we did see a knock on Torch, but they're safe in their little castle there. Really, what's going to be tough too is how is TXU going to move in here through the trees? They might try to take this dip here, but then Torch could also have a view. So where are they going to play if they go down south? Some tree cover which is not a lot of options. Really, we're going to want to pay attention to what K7's going to do here on the backside of Milta, I, I think. I was going to bring you down there, man. I, I Both Winner's Circle and K7, uh, full four-mans, and they've got a, a team of two hanging on to the edge with the building here. So they're in a really tough spot here, AE. Um, and I'm very interested to see how K7 and WC deals with this. Um, you do have the third party of Nitrous Esports on the way west side on that ridge, as you said. It looks like they're going to take their time um, and really just kind of let Blue make the decision for him, uh, for them here uh, of when to go. Um, again, we just need to keep a close eye on WC and K7 who have begun their action. Uh, K7 sent two in the car. Gab has already gotten into the check. And now K7, Kizza is going last there. Qdex opens things up with a knock on the chap on the north side up there but it's uh going out both ways full is gonna drop qdex instantly first there it's just two members left for toxic eu on top of the hill um gab is gonna take down full there now it's down to just sly the third parties are playing a factor here uh blitz ae arts is gonna take down k7 tyro kizza is pulling up in the huffy he's got the smokes out he's trying to save his teammates but the third party is just long range ae is just playing such a factor here when is wc gonna push them is the question because ae is picking up some very valuable knocks here wc um not really forced into them quite yet and you have to keep an eye on nitrous esports and torch all looking down into these buildings so whew, a lot going on k7 trying to get active on to e, uh, toxic eu there um and i think they kind of had a little bit of control of the situation until the third parties came out from ae they blitz yeah i was just surprised that they pushed this hill so quickly because there's just no cover from milta here G uh, gav had some really nice shots from the back side but once you leave that shed there's just no cover and it turns out as we kind of head back to WC and AE here that part of this building is in, but it's really not going to be enough for WC to hold long term. So I'm curious if they're going to make a push here or what they're going to do to solidify their position to rotate out of here. So uh, Torch picking up another kill on the kill feed on one of the members of Nitrous Esports. That's Luca. We've seen him win MVP in one of our events before, and he's got an MK in his hand blitz. We might want to get into his perspective and see exactly what's going on with Luca. Um, I know you've got a fight going on on the south side as well. Uh, yeah, as you said, Winter Circle pushing this building hard. Let's, that's where we need to be. Yeah, let's take a look. We got... AE trying to hold off Cliff. Got a knock on the stairs. This could be devastating. No lethals, though, for Cliff right here. He lost his other teammate. Uzi. He's going to throw his gas can. I don't think it's going to be enough, though. It's going to at least block off, deter them from getting up the stairs. Really, all this is going to do is going to hurt them later on, Winter Circle, that is, because Torch... Oh, the gas can actually got that thirst for him, Blitz. Oh, wow. Paul I guess... is going to go there, and then Cliff is on the roof. He's still got three members of WC to deal with here. Um, and unfortunately, we just watched uh, Nitrous Esports 
go out in fifth place to Torch, who has had a quiet round, but they ha do have seven kills, Blitz. We haven't been talking about them much, uh, but as they do, they're in great position, picking up some very valuable kill points uh, Are already seven at seven kills. Yeah, for sure. And hey, this window here, people always forget about that spot. One of my favorites when you're holding that roof. And now this is definitely an important time to try to thirst. But the third party is really going to hurt Cliff. He's going to get behind the wall and try to rip a first aid here. And again, what's going to happen here is now that Torch got that elimination of NES on the top side there, AE is probably screwed. It's just going to hurt WC because they weren't able to leave yet. And now Cliff is just wreaking more havoc from the top side with the Uzi. Oh he goes down. He gets gosh. the knock, though. And now it's just Ghost. But he's not going to be able to do anything. He's lost in the smoke. The zone's here as well. I can't even track. It's that hard to see. And WC goes down. Winner's circle are going to really be kicking themselves for that one. Only two members of AE holding that compound. Um, and the micro Uzi work from Cliff just unbelievable really just totally through the round for winner's circle but just like that it's two members from k7 versus a four man for torch here k7 is a team that obviously demands a lot of respect kizza and gav amazing shooters uh but this torch team is not going to give them any time to rest here blitz he's going to need to get that heal off quickly kizza's put down to just about one shot uh and fizz and luca leading the way not wasting any time here at all. Lucas starts it off with a knock on the Gav with the MK. And they're going to drop Kizza. They've got the angle splits. It's not going to be enough. There is your first place winner. Chicken dinner. 10 kills going to Torch. Led by that MK on Luca. Fizz as well leading the charge there. And they're going to do the job. Uh, picking up once again 10 kills and the chicken. K7 only picking up 3 kills and the second place. And rounding out the top. Three in match one is going to be winner's circle with four kills. Wow, absolutely amazing, man. We're going to go over to our cam view. What's up, everybody? Hope you guys are doing well. Can't believe we're finally here for the NA versus EU showdown. We just want to welcome everybody um, that might have missed the intro here. Today is day one of the showdown in general, but first we're going to be doing EU and the setup right now is that EU will be playing first each day at 3 p.m. Eastern. And then after that, we'll have a quick break and we're going to be coming back at 8 p.m. Eastern for the NA portion of the showdown. This is going to kind of rinse and repeat Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. Wednesday is only going to be NA. And that's going to be the format over the next few weeks until we get into the playoffs and finals. We're so excited to be here today. Me and Stento have been doing this for a while now for the weekly series, and we're here now. That was a great first game. Uh, what, do you, what do you think, Stenta? Yeah, I, I was, when you started talking and the cameras came on us here, I'm just sitting here with, with the shit-eating grin on my face. <laughs> I, I'm so excited to be here. Yeah, good times. Um, wa watching these players is, is such a treat for me, man. I, I love PUBG on console. I think I make that pretty clear every day in my life and um yeah it's, it's a lot of work getting these tournaments up um but it, but it's it's what we love to do uh blitz and i have been um working together now for for a few years um and we're really just hoping to dial it in for a better experience for everyone and um we're really excited to to be in eu for for one of our first events um that's an actual league rather than a one day thing so um everyone from eu what welcome um to to main gaming in our events welcome to blitz's channel we're, we're very excited that you're here um and that was an unbelievable first match it, it seemed kind of it seemed kind of tough to to keep our eyes on one battle because so much was happening simultaneously i think what stuck out to me was there was 57 teams alive very late game there and then before you knew it it was down to 22 um i've been told that this eu eu team uh comp side is just uh you know filled with such veteran teams that you're going to see a lot of teams in the late game with these guys so it's just um it's, it's going to be very hard for us to uh yeah. to keep an eye on some of these fights but um i know we're up for the challenge uh we know these guys are such good shooters that um it, it's so fun to, to tap into their perspective and watch them work and um torch with kind of an easy win for them they were in such good location they didn't really need to move they got an mk in the hands of luca yeah um, and before you know it they picked up 10 kills in the win um, it was a very tough circle for a lot of people because first circle was was kind of on the bridge. It could have gone south. Then pretty shortly we knew we were coming north, and then it shifted way to the east side, pulling you know farm and all that over. So um, you love to see emergency e drop out of toxic EU who had an amazing first game. Um, but that's just game one blitz. We got four more to get to here. So why Absolutely. don't we take a short break while we get the next lobby set up? Absolutely, we'll be right back, everybody, with game two. GGS.
other thing was your alert splits to turn those off. Okay. Because like follows and that type of stuff is popping yeah, up. On yeah, screen. yeah, yeah. What's up, everybody? We are back for game two here with our initial flight path going from Georgia Pole all the way down to the military island. Ton of action game one. And also just want to say that, uh, you know, we are going to be working out a few kinks here as this is my first time hosting the main gaming uh series or any kind of event on our on my channel here so thank you all for being here and tuning in thank you guys for the new follows and everything like that we hope to kind of increase the production value week by week here and implement some new stuff that we've been working on behind the scenes uh so thanks again and hopefully we'll have another great game to here another good circle with this flight path what do you see first Thenta? yeah absolutely first thing i want to point out uh, Georgia pool down to Novo plane path. It looks like a lot of our teams um, Have got some space in between each other. I'm not noticing any hot drop real quick So we got a, a quick moment to talk about some stuff here <laughs> One more thing I want to point out is that there that there you go first circle shift has got More than 50% water included and our winners from the first match are really the only people who are probably going to be uh, Happy about that shift their torch in very good uh, position here in between Milta power and Milta Edge also in a decent spot, but the rest of the lobby is going to have a pain in the butt of a rotation here. Uh, one thing I do wanted to point out that RMV, again, that squad we watched land up at Severny, not able to reach Severny with this path, though, so they're kind of stuck to looting uh, uh, this area that they are in just to the south side of shooting range um, as well. But we're very excited to be here for game two of the evening. Actually, top left says game one Blitz, but game two of the evening. And um, just as Blitz mentioned, we are going to be trying out some new features and working out some some kinks here for the first uh, day or two. So we do appreciate your patience as we figure out um, and get everything running as smooth as possible. So once again, welcome to the main gaming NA versus EU showdown. I am one of your hosts, Stento, here with Blitz5, and we are uh, very excited about this game too. I, I do see some shots ringing out. Uh, it's just long range stuff. So once again, nothing really too pressing happening right now blitz yeah we're seeing uh a a a a e excuse me not a head towards gaka by himself right now getting on a motorcycle maybe do some scouting for the ae team they're pretty split all the way from south georgia pole down i've been playing a lot more in fpp recently stento on pc and both on console and you really realize that rotating in this view just completely limits your knowledge ability if you guys haven't played fpp for people watching out there highly recommend giving it a try out and seeing this perspective yeah as, as we mentioned just a good amount of space between a lot of teams here i noticed one kill happened we ko team 15 knocked and thirsted one of team 11 so they're going to be down to three players, but that's all the action we've really seen happen so far here. This circle is going to force so many teams to just kind of loot up what they can as fast as possible and try to figure out their way to zone. Um, the thing is, it's just such a tough zone to work with. We're basically in the same area as we were for end game last game blitz, but this is phase one. Yeah, this is unbelievable that the circle is so close to the last one. Now, wow, looking at my screen, we see so many teams are on the rotation right now. We have T1 rotating, RMV, RLX, Core, all moving P7, RS, TXC is gonna be moving here. Kinda wanna see if they run into a squad 
Because CXC is going to be going past NES tier. NES, excuse me. Looking for any shots that might hit the target. Yeah, NES is a little bit spread here. The thing is, TXC looks like they pulled up wanting some of the smoke here. They're out on foot. Actually, excuse me. They flipped their car. <laughs> so uh, Shangdi and uh, Benjo are going to need a little bit of a pickup here. They're going to be all uh, clown carring this one blitz over here. So dangerous way to rotate early on here. I thought they were pulling up looking for a little bit of a fight, but they just flipped their car. Yeah, so another important reason why i always like to drive with a minimum of two cars there because you just never know and that could be devastating an area like that where nes probably already grabbed the nearby vehicle so they're able to survive here but as sento mentioned clown carring is also not a great idea a lot of teams i'll cr oh, keep going i was just gonna say it's just a great time to kind of just uh, leave the map open and kind of watch these teams move. ZES is getting dangerously close to RMV on the north side of the map. They're actually driving right up to that dead end compound. I think they're coasting in, Blitz. They're coasting right in. There's two RMV hacker uh, in Ben M. They're waiting. They're going to get a quick knock on Amir Curiel. The rest of the team's going to need to show up quick because Saul is doing all oh, he can, but hacker is just too efficient. Two quick knocks. The rest of the team is there, Blitz. Blow and Ghost are going to need to do something quick. We're going to have to tack, tap into Hacker here. Already got the two knocks. The rest of RMV is pulling up. They need... Hacker needs them to pull up a little bit closer here. A little bit of a jump shot out of Hacker, but it was Ben M's that got the note, uh, knock on the Ghost. He's got an M4. The two M4 combination pays off here. Hacker jumps the wall and deals with the rest of ZES. So some great shots coming out of uh, Ben M's and Hacker here. They did not even need the rest of the squad who did show up uh, in a pretty timely manner. Like we should point that out. But Hacker with some great shots. A little bit of a jump shot there as Ben M's hit him from a different angle was, was some fancy stuff. I was loving that. Uh, great plays from Hacker. Yeah, it really helped that they had the double M4s there early on. Sometimes that's the way to go. And Absolutely. then eventually switch to the mini or whatever gun you're going to take. So, you know, because you're going to want that firepower. Just checking out this silly care package all the way on the water nobody's gonna get that it's an on loss to see just wanted to see what it was for fun um but yeah kind of yeah this is your gun stento and it's just floating yeah. out there lost at sea <laughs> somewhere somewhere in some game there's a stento swimming towards that uh but <laughs> i'm cast away but not here what's great i just can't believe we got this same circle stento because this one is a little bit more south i would really say that torch took the best spot and we saw them with the best spot last game as well and that really paid off for them you know sometimes you don't want to be middle too early because you miss out on kills but honestly in my opinion that's how i like to play everybody has their own strategy some teams like to play edge some teams like to play middle uh, but we'll see of course where the circle goes with torch and t1 already in a really great spot along with edge and k7 actually is not a boat stento they might be going for the scare package i might be i might stand corrected i, I, I like this team for a reason blitz I knew I liked this team for a reason. They, they might be taking a wide rotation, but that seems to be a, a beeline for the pack, right? Yeah, at this point, you just got to worry about gas. And um, actually, because it's going to be a while until we see them, we just saw RLX pull up below TXEU. So this is Toxic EU. Head pain's in a tough spot. Trying to get a smoke, but was still visible there. It's going to get knocked. has been playing great, and it's full with a very... Uh, beneficial angle for the squad here. I didn't see exactly who picked him up, but Full picked up a quick knock there with the SLR. Two kills to Full, one to Swift, one to Slide. These boys have been playing together for a while. Toxic EU is, is firing on all cylinders right now, picking up on, on a great game two after game one. Yeah, and uh, there, the one member of RLX was actually like nowhere to be seen. He's kind of by Lumberyard, so they must have got separated there. I'm not sure exactly what happened. And then we're seeing NES kind of fight with tx from the beach here but this isn't really a great spot to stay long term so i imagine that nes will eventually pack it up and head out of here potentially but we'll see what happens it can be hard to leave the beach here against a good team when you go to rotate here yeah, there's just not a lot of hard cover yeah they have they have cars they've got they've got plenty of cars there I'm not sure exactly. I'm trying to figure out what TXEU knows. They are taking some shots over there. Um, Spirits might go for the bridge tough. here. Yeah, it's just tough. Uh, like, like Toxic EU is not going to push out there for these kills. So it's just going to be a matter uh, if Nitrous can get around or not. 
um again they have multiple vehicles like two buggies and two two cars so um we'll have to keep a close eye on this because toxic eu definitely in the better position here uh we know they can shoot they've already picked up four kills on people trying to rotate by and, and i just probably heard that um so they're being a little bit careful with their beach rotation here they don't need to move yet so they're in a decent spot if we have any idea k7 is officially pulling up onto the coast splits if you take a look at your map i'm not sure if they picked up any goodies but the boys looks I'm like sure they all did have m4s cutex gav kizza and tyro working their way up the coast here he looks like an awm in For kizza's kizza. hand is what i've noticed i love this stenton what i like even better is that they park the boat where it was accessible in case the circle they went back south back in but kind of send it down the coast yeah but it's solidified that the circle's staying here so now it's the question is will it land on torch or will it end more by t1 up north right this circle Look normally the spread that t1 has blitz great yeah i mean you can have this uh, this spread in this area it's just risky if someone crashes mini milta uh but really oh wow we might see a little fight here between r and v right outside of prison they're kind of going north trying to rotate but they're going to run right into txc here Daisy has a lot of shots on Hacker, but nothing comes down. Going for the reload, Benjoy is going to try and get some more shots, but really not too much damage coming down on RMV at Stento. Nade coming in from Benjoy. Yeah, this is a really interesting spot to fight there. Hacker does pick up a knock onto Frozen, but it gets traded back two times. Benzem and Hacker we saw what they can do as a two-man here, but unfortunately both going down here. Hacker has already been thirsted. TXC is got three up still. I'm not sure if they realize Deco and Moz have wrapped all the way to the south side. There you go, a great nade from Moz is gonna get the thirst on the Frozen, but now they know their location. shang is a little bit kind of strung out from the rest of the team here. He's gonna need to use the smokes to kind of sink back down into that rock face. Yeah, now there there's go. actually P7. third party shots coming in yeah. from WC here. And P7 also getting in their cars. They, they came this way for a second, but I think the uh the third or, or fourth party we should even say um made p7 reconsider they're gonna wrap away in their vehicles uh, i'm just personally looking at this all from above you're watching ghost kind of uh, work his way into this fight here but rmv is still in the thick of it putting some good shots down onto shang d ghost is now on to pride rock they like to call it he's taking a look around see what he can see even comes to the rest of wc who's closer to the woodyard blitz so this is an interesting battle we have a two man of rmv kind of stuck to that shack now toxic uh is down to three members um and winter circle i think they're gonna call back ghost yeah he's gonna retract back up the hill so we're gonna see a little bit of a, a stall in this fight uh maybe it's a good time to, to take a, a little bit of a zone out and see what else is going on elsewhere on the map because this is a little bit of just long range shots trading out now but it kind of looks like that's the case all over the map the, the the main thing that has my attention now blitz is torch versus k7 wow. i don't know if it was a pull up but it is happening i'm guessing k7 did pull up here but they came for the water so they I don't know if they had a vehicle or what. They might have just made it on foot successfully kind of maneuvering through the trees. I don't see a vehicle here. Gav. And Gav gets knocked, kind of stopping the push from RS on top of the hill. Torch, uh, Luca is actually down as well. Kizza yeah, might go Gav in here to get the flush. Luca. Unfortunately, Gav stopped in the open to shoot at Luca, and he, and he lasered him. But the third party from RS takes him down. So now it's just a three on two. Torch have lost two members because of this hard crash and push from K7. Um, and this is what the rest of the lobby wants to see, right? Torch got out to a great start with a 10 kill victory. Kizza's gonna get in there with the ace and get that thirst. It's, uh, Kayomi there with some great shots onto Qdex. However, Tyro is there for the instant revive. So, Torch is gonna need to be careful about pushing from their houses down, um, to the south side to these guys here. Kizza is also in the house, um, next door watching this push. So, um... Great shots from Kayomi, but they're really not going to be able to do anything as a two-man here. Yeah, you, ha um, you have to be bummed if you're Torch because they just took such a great spot. And this compound is usually really easy to defend against uh, Sento. I don't want to say easy because obviously K7 is a great team, but usually you can spot people are coming this early in. And, and actually, Sento, there's another care package landing on this compound right on K7. Uh, but it's going to be hard to get the two members of Torch out here. Like, you know, what do you do? Now they've lost a member K7, that is. So do they try to three-man into one building? That could go poorly. They could easily lose a member there. Uh, they also have to waste some smokes and utility to try and do that. Now you're stuck in a compound with somebody else. This is how a lot of teams lose members are, are these moments. Even in casual matches, Stento, we've all been here. This is how it happens. So how do you maneuver this properly is going to make or break K7's game, I think.
Yeah, I think the next circle up is going to kind of dictate how, how swiftly they deal with this. They're both in a decent position in zone right now, but if this does kind of drastically shift up to the north, I think you'll see K7 try to deal with them sooner than later. So I, I think this next shift is going to kind of dictate what exactly we see here. But um, Flair is dropping in right now directly on these guys. So did, did, did these guys shoot this? I didn't even notice the Flair gun blitz, but... Yeah, no, me neither. I thought this was just a regular care package, but I guess it, it was a flare. I didn't realize. It's tough for them to grab it in between the buildings here, uh, unless they do eventually find a way to push torch with some smokes or whatnot. But um, it is 15 teams are still alive here, Blitz, as we uh, approach the 15-minute mark uh, in 44 players. So that, that's some broken teams. Yeah, it's a it's a P90 on that crate with an 18 a, a time scope. Excuse me. I'm just quickly checking some action on the west side of Milta. Some members of KO are down. I don't think anyone's going to push on them because of where they're situated. There's also two teams very close to one another on the street uh, southwest of Milta. Just yeah, keeping a look at that. All right, Blitz. NES versus Toxic. We saw uh, Toxic kind of holding them out near the bridge. Uh, we just didn't catch how they both rotated to here. But now it's a little bit of a battle of, of the east side of the road, west side of the road. But Toxic's kind of reduced to one building. NES has got a little bit of a split from north to south here. It's going to be very interesting to see what KO on the north side of this all does. Um, and it looks like Euro is sending two down the hill as well. So teams just really extending all sorts of feeler arms out here to, to get um, frag points and, and see what they can scout moving forward. So KO is crashing the building. Um, and the shots across the street have rung out. One of the members from NES is down. Oh. Slayers with a nice nade from Sly. That's going to be confirmed. Toxic EU continuing to put those kill points on the board, Blitz. Yeah, I figured TX was going to push here, but they kind of slowed down a little bit, but Sly made it across now. KO just crashed on the opposite side of the street here to the north. Sly's up. Chap just made his way over. Red Rover, Red Rover. Now Swift come over. He's the last member left on the west side. Yeah, NES is starting to kind of push away. I've got a, a nice aerial view on this as I'm kind of using the fence to push away and get a little bit better zone. And that's the shift we were talking about, Blitz. Pretty crazy up to the north here. Now both Torch and K7 have to come out. And I'm going to tap back over to that side. I don't know who done it, but Fizz is knocked in one of these houses. And that's going to start the, the push here from Kizza. Yeah, there you go. They're just skipping the care package right now. Kizza is going to be the first one trying to make his way in. Well, this they're going to get the flush here. And just Kaomi is going to leave the building and just start running into zone. We also have to watch. Right, interesting play. Yep, he might be able to pick up some points if he gets into a good position here. So I, I honestly like that play rather than trying to uh, 3v1 K7 in these buildings as zone is coming. So I, I like that play from Kayomi. Um, also, RS just crashed right on edge here. And they're kind of leading. They're trying to make a push in here. Pickles literally at one health. And Denial and RS Spree are just going to get a heal off in the Wizard Tower. I thought we were going to see a big push there, which is why I was bringing us over. But I think they're going to be stuck kind of healing. Licking their wounds on this side. This is a good spot to be, I think, Blitz. Take a look at your map. And under the under Milta is TXEU, NES, Edge, and this RS squad. None of them are really in zone besides the buildings um, that RS and Edge have. And it's just very little to work with. We, we've seen what Toxic EU can do here. They've been fracking all morning so far. Excuse me. If you're joining us from EU, it, it's nighttime. Uh, but uh, afternoon here. So... Neither, <laughs> neither was quite correct, but we're going to see something happen to Milta here as NES is now just holding on as a solo. Rez could not get across the street. Yeah, I want to see what Spree's going to do here because holding a wizard tower in comp play is just not that successful. And there's only two members of Edge at this compound here. Pickle's just playing really slow on this side. Yeah, Pickle's kind of the X factor in this battle. If they are going to push the Wizard Tower aggressively, he'll, he'll be able to kind of sneak up the side of the hill. Uh, but Edge really haven't sent anyone that aggressively this way right now. It's only Pammy up on the hill right now. They got a member all the way back at the kind of balcony building. That's going to be Kupia. And um, the other two are just hanging out to the west side safely uh, in their own buildings. It looks like Pammy is starting to play a little bit aggressive here. I don't know if they know about Pickle. Well, they know he's there. They were shooting at him, but they don't know he's right in the doorway there. Okay. Prims is going in. He sees... He, I think he actually sees the gun through the wall. What an unfortunate PUBG situation there. I think he saw the barrel through the wall. <laughs> but that's honestly something that you need to know if you're a longtime yeah. PUBG player. Is you can't really stay up against the wall like that, right? But that's super unfortunate there. At least that's what I saw on my screen. 
that they were able to see that. Spot, but yeah, de definitely. I think the uh, gun through the wall, uh, <laughs> old PUBG glitch, uh, did him in there, and, and he was uh, in an interesting spot. Now the other two members are both in this tower. And I, I'd like to see Edge as a four-man push this quickly so that they have this south side um, and a little bit more free of a rotation. But uh, just as I say that, Phase 5 has popped Blitz, and it is heading even more north. So Code Red Gaming and WC are going to be happy that they don't have to come off the hill. Yeah, um, for sure. It's a very interesting situation. We have a couple of solos in the center of zone, um, and everyone from the south is going to have to work their way in still. So. Yeah, I'm really with you, dude. I think they need to get the Wizard Tower out here because this is just going to be a pain. They can't leave early because they'll get shot. The Wizard Tower has limited visibility, so they could easily like smoke one side and push in here. But then also, Stento, T1 might be able to shoot Edge on yeah, the, the third, third party, so it might it. not be worth it. And then if Edge smokes and goes left, they might have to watch out for Toxic here on the outside. Honestly, I don't know. The Edge is just in a terrible spot right now. Yeah, they are in a tough one spot. Car back there, and they're gonna have a lot of focus on them from Toxic EU. Well, they brought in a second car. Already. They got two cars here, two two. They're gonna make the push. I think they're gonna drive right next to the shed here, and then try to go left and then right. Coltsy gets knocked out from T1 right off the bat. He was the driver though, so Prim slow to switch seats. Now he's down to eight health. He gets knocked out, so they do lose two. But the two vehicle strategy did work out. The team's gonna survive, but losing two members here, they've made it to the shed where they're gonna crash and hold on, but. Gonna be a tough spot from here on out, Stento. Yeah, absolutely. There's a lot going on right now. Teams are trying to rotate into the center in one of our solos for AE. We've seen what the solos for this team can do, playing a spoiler. Uh, and we're right back where we were last end game blitz here in the farm field, a little bit of this wooded area. Um, and these players are probably getting a little bit sick of this uh, hillside here. KO tried to send it, uh, but Euro is just kind of watching them from above. Toxic EU working their way uh, through the farm field kind of late here. They're going to try to get this revive off in the open zones coming in. Should be okay. T1's making a move. K7's pushing up the hill as well. We're going to tap into that shortly here on the east side. I think we're going to see a skirmish very quickly here. P7 has... Two members up in the wizard tower. K7 is pushing in. I'm going to tap into Qdex perspective. He's got the P90. is pushing this wizard tower. Below them is WC. Steels actually gets an Omnock knock onto Bueno. First nade from Qdex makes it into the wizard tower. It was a stun, excuse me. Gets the quick P90 drop. And the flush. K7 moving very well together. They have to worry about Winter Circle here because they have a great view from where they're at. Really, I'd like to be, you want to be in Winter Circle's position. They have such a great vantage point from their spot. We'll tap into their view. Yeah, we haven't talked about them uh, enough today. I feel like Winter Circle is such a veteran team here. They've only got one kill so far in this round, but as you said, I think that if I had to pick a location, I, I would have chose their location before that shift. Now I would probably take COR, but they are in a great spot here. They need to watch out because there's a solo on the uh, the backside. It looks like uh, Paul is, is taking that uh, aggressively. He's found the solo, hanging out in the prone position. That is going to work out for, for Deco for RMV. The, the overshots are going to need to be quick here for the rest of Winter's Circle to prevent that thirst. Deco's going to rip a first aid here on a little bit of a ridge. Uh, and the rest of WC is just kind of waiting for that peak for the thirst to happen. Let's see if Deco can make something more of this blitz. Yeah, I'm surprised Bueno didn't get a nade in early. This is a nade now. I think it's going to land perfectly. It does, but he actually gets the kill off that. Off the, the bullet kill, excuse me. But that nade was placed perfectly there. Yeah, the revive is going to happen on DePaul as the rest of the team is already kind of scouting their next play. We're still on board with, with Winter Circle here. Ghost has found someone in the uh, Harry Potter and he takes RLX down. That's going to give them a little bit of uh, some hard cover here, Blitz. And now quickly three kills for WC as they start to clean up some of these broken teams and these solos that are kind of strewn about throughout the woods. Yeah, now they have to worry about T1 here is on the bottom side below them. They just took out a solo player from, I think it was RS. Denial there was on the bottom side. K7 just got up. T1 from behind there. Yeah, I, I want to see what Kizza is up to here. 
They've got a knock, and, and Kism's kind of leading the way with a 4X on the M4 here, but it's Qdex with the P90. We saw it drop on that Torch compound that they took, and Qdex is putting it to use right now. Qdex is the X Factor right now, has four kills, P90, SLR, good from close, good at range. He's in between Winter Circle and T1, so he's playing such a big role for them. He has to stay alive here. Unfortunately, two members of T1 are stuck behind this rock. Qdex is watching both angles. I'm tapping into his perspective. The rest yeah, of K7 absolutely. can't really move. Watch right now. He's got five kills already. He's got the 8X on the SLR doing them some damage down, but the rest of his uh, team, unfortunately, Needs trying a little to high get in there. from edge and in Kizza dealing with a little bit of third party from Winter Circle. So Kizza goes down. It's going to be just Tyro and Qdex here. Qdex with a timely step up. Takes down Big Dog. Big step up there. The, the P90 for the insta thirst as well. That's what's nice about the 50 clip. If you got a nice thirst waiting to happen instantly if you need it. Um, and Winter Circle do lose one member here, Blitz, but they still got three. Um, and a nice little spread. And they know exactly where Qdex is. The nades are out. Uh, the smoke gun is out. More frags uh, are being attempted. Bueno is going to work his way to the, the Harry Potter Tower here. And the rest of K7 Tyro is, is met by two members from uh, Tenetic one so it's just qdex still here dealing with uh what, what's kind of two two teams here he's gonna take down ghost with a little bit of long range p90 work and now he's just got bueno um excuse me and paul up the hill to deal with so qdex making it look easy here picking up some big points for k7 who has had a very interesting uh round rotating all the way from military base with a with a boat working their way through torch picking up some kill, uh, care package weapons along the way uh, and Qdex just won't go down here. Yeah, unbelievable here. Qdex kind of got gifted a crazy ridge that he was kind of playing in between both teams, Winter Circle and uh, the team below them, uh, T1 that was. And now it's the sole survivor. And also on the bottom side here, Sly was being Sly there, hiding behind this rock, takes out Edge Pammy. And P.O. is still alive, Stento, in the center of the zone. We have six teams up, 13 teams remaining. We kind of just went through that whole period where we saw so many players and teams get eliminated. It's been very hectic trying to cast everything here. We have Euro on the west side. And Core is still up here on the top side. All four members, which is just huge for them. They're definitely the favorites right now to win because we have a lot of broken teens on the rest of the map. Yeah, I've got an awesome view. I'm just super high up in, in the sky right now. And, and you can really see the, the dominant spread that COR has on this zone right now. Almost have been able to extend to like the, the center radius of this circle right now. And the only one that would be close is a solo in PO. Uh, Euro, unfortunately, just got taken down to two players um, in Winter Circle. Having uh, needing a little bit of help to deal with Qdex there. It's actually Kaki who's going to pick up that kill for... Um, Excuse me, for Code Red Gaming here. Yeah, and finally goes down. P.O. gets another kill. We, we've actually caught both of his kills there, which is kind of funny. He only has two. I thought he had maybe more, but he's just been hiding at the rock. Now spotted from Winter Circle. Now his position's going to be given up here. How is Euro going to make it into the zone, though, is the question, because it is moving. We are at our final four teams. It's a 4v2v2v1. 2 v 2 v Yeah, absolutely. This is, is totally Code Red Gaming's game to lose they need to be careful there's some powerful um broken teams here with euro and winter circle kind of playing both edges of the south side of zone the solo is going to get knocked out that's going to be godly for euro picking up an extra kill point um and there you go ollie just starts things off with some long range m shots he's uh m4 shots he's going to take down no sino who we've seen with some very good plays early on here uh, with some trouble early on for in some of these fights, but Keeves is going to pick up that kill. So now it's just a two man for Winter Circle, a one uh, one man for uh, Euro. That's going to be Godly and, and Code Red Gaming, standing at the top of your zone, four deep. Very comfortable game for them right now, Blitz. Yeah, I think Euro. You know, I know most people don't do this, but by Euro taking out Pio there, they just lost that rock to winner circle and now most likely winner circle is going to kill godly here he's going to be safe but once he has to go he's dead there that's kind of one of the situations where sometimes you feel like you hold your shot i mean you want the point right but they, if they kind of helped had po up took out winner circle they pushed this way they might have been able to take this rock anyways now it's 4v2 in winner circle has the bottom side of this rock it's pretty hard to play out of this especially in fpp because you just don't know where people are going to be watching you from the top of this ridge right especially if core gets really spread out so this is going to be a really tough task for winner circle you never know things could happen 
They have cracked it's here though. Bueno goes down. Oh my gosh. That, that happened so quick. I, I was actually watching Polinara try to shoot some shots up the hill, but it was just a multitude of spray from several Code Red gaming members there. Uh, and, the, and they just got evaporated there, Blitz. Yeah, that was absolutely insane. Just trying to call it out and switch scenes, and then the game came to an end. Code Red with a definitive win of game two there with nine kills to their name. Winner Circle battled it out. They only end up with four kills, but in second place, they stayed alive. They were running into a lot of good teams there. Uh, Euro in third place with four kills of their own, and AE because of PO surviving into the fourth spot there with two kills. Another great game there, Stento. Let's bring it over to our camera so we can say hello to everybody. Um, again, still working on a few things, production side, but thank you guys for being with us today. Um, this is our first day of the event for EU. That was game two right there. We had Torch, the winners of game one, if I remember correctly. And then for game two, we just had Code Red Gaming. So a lot of great action, Stento. What are you thinking so far? Yeah, uh, I... It two very similar circles i think is is what was going to be um you know something to point out but something that's pro probably also pretty frustrating for for some of these teams that's a very tough circle to rotate to there's some very popular compounds like we saw torch um and in several teams you know you get into those few compounds that are good and then you know some people can roam the hillsides comfortably but so many teams are just it's just impossible to get into that area on the hillside with the farm field being you know wide open there um, so it was it, it was a very interesting end game. I think Code Red Gaming just very comfortable on the top of that hill, got a little bit of circle favor, and, and it was never kind of e even in question for them. Um, another big play that we kind of caught a little bit late, um, but you know when we saw K7 crash t crash Torch, um, Torch has, has proven time and again that that they're going to be in good zone that they can frag out from that position. Um, so Torch was in such a comfortable position mid game, um, and we saw K7 do some form of a crash and, and actually ended up um, eliminating them. Uh, you didn't really notice it on your screen, um, probably, but Kiza took down uh, Kayomi with the with the AWM. So just big plays kind of happening. Um, from some big teams here like k7 to kind of get out you know your first place team like torch so um it's gonna be very interesting to see the leaderboard as it updates for us here but there's gonna be a lot of a lot of teams in the uh conversation here early on blitz yeah for sure we have the scoreboard and stuff built into the stream today uh but so far we're still probably waiting on everything to update so we'll wait for that stuff and then we'll be able to show you guys some of the information that we we have um and we'll get ready for game three and continue the action so so far torch with game one code red with game two and we'll be back with game three in just a few minutes blitz can we talk <laughs> oh yeah yeah i got uh... oh yeah hold on a second
All right, we're back with game three of the NA versus EU showdown. This is our first day with EU, and we have our first game on the dusty desert. Is that what you call it, Senta? Of yeah, Miramar, baby. our famous switch up. Normally during the MG weekly event, we just throw one Miramar in there to shake things up. Now we have two. So the rotation is between, we have the map list here. Erangal, Erangal, Miramar, Miramar, and then we go back to Erangal. So the next two games, again, will be on Miramar. And here we have the flight path from kind of Alcantara area down to Impala. Yeah, it was a very interesting flight path, kind of on the favoring the north side of map here. And I'm just keeping a close eye on some teams. T1 is kind of spread amongst a lot of teams in the San Martin uh, Hacienda area, as well as Minas, Torch, and ZES, both hanging out in Minas. Uh, cir first circle has popped in Hacienda, Junkyard, Minas. All of this is uh, kind of in this centered up area here with T1 and TXC. Yeah, I like this circle here, Stento, right? With Hacienda off center, T1 in a great early spot. Hopefully we'll see some great action at this hot corner here, center of the map. Yeah, it's it's an interesting early dynamic because if you take a look at your map, there's so many teams that are already comfortable center zone. So it's going to be pretty interesting to see how these teams around Monte Nuevo, around El Pozo, all of these Western teams, how they get into zone. Uh, I think we're going to see a lot of Northern kind of rotations here into zone. Uh, Edge is probably going to take that, zone, uh, that road all the way across, but we'll have to wait and see. But... Um, the focus is lots of teams are already kind of centered up here. So you might see some, some teams playing edge for a bit, uh, but we'll have to wait and see. Yeah. What's great point there, Sento, is that where are these teams that need to rotate going to go? All of the great compounds really have been taken here, except for junkyard or for kind of the compound above junkyard. This is where the emergency pickup could come into play. We were kind of, you know, between all the action, I don't know if we saw a team use an e-pickup last game, Sento. We saw one in game one from Toxic EU, but I'm not sure um, if, you know, we saw one last game. So this could be huge if a team could find one, especially for the teams that land in the big cities. I feel like you have a better chance of finding good items like the pickup if you land Pozo or in La Cabrera up top. Uh, so we'll see if those teams end up using that to get in. Yeah, I, I think the emergency airdrop is such an interesting thing that was added into PUBG esports but i think it's even more interesting on this map because there's so many high mountain peaks and in, in, in different son of a gun spots that you can lift into that can totally ruin a round or win you around so i, I love seeing those used here um it's such an interesting dynamic that really uh, affects the gameplay pretty severely so um take a quick look at your map i think we're gonna see some of the teams in the center start to uh, uh maybe go four deep at some compounds maybe some two two splits uh you're seeing toxic kind of push north to kind of regroup with one another um and t1 as well as taking a like a, a little bit of a one one two split in the center there so i'm loving to see some of these early uh game rotations here rlx as well getting a nice compound just to the southeast of water treatment so a lot of these teams are, are getting really good spots early on yeah, RLX trying to move in across from TXC here. See where they go. They're just going to hold that other side or go more north. It's actually a great take for them at this point, considering all of the compounds that are already taken. RMV is actually getting pretty close to Euro here, Stento. I'm going to tap into Ben's perspective. He's coming in on the bike, Stento. And gets oh immediately spotted from yeah i got caught on the the box inside there unfortunate gonna go down to nocino who we know can shoot this guy uh some very nifty peaks earlier he's gonna pick up a quick kill for euro yeah that was uh interesting motor transportation there to take the bike into the kind of the hacienda region stento not really a safe place to be in at that point he must have not had that much of an idea that they were there or something uh you you, it just does, doesn't really make sense. <laughs> Maybe the bikes are quiet, but uh, again, uh, this is a, a crowded area, so unfortunate for RMV, who, we, who we've seen with some impressive uh, kill points early on in the first two games, uh, but unfortunate to lose one member there to uh, Euro, who, who kind of 
stacked three deep into hacienda one in mini hacienda and the cars are starting to rotate through here blitz team 16 sending traves this is our uh first place team from match two trying to get a regroup here with ollie in center zone here but there's so many people around that it's going to be very interesting to watch uh the rest of code red gaming try to get to this location in t1 already kind of pushing on the rock in the road but now they decided that they got to retract a little bit yes yeah, so i actually just t one's gonna go ahead let's oh i actually just tapped into zes here they lost three members right now two one member's already not uh gone two members are knocked uh there was some fighting here above minas i wanted to tap in and see what's going on looks like we had a good fight here torch getting some early action and luca looking for maybe a flush or re-knock here with this nade it's gonna be close not close enough though this is also on the move just the two members left mercurio goes down there and they get the wipe early on stento for torch four points for them yeah, Fizz with the hollow on the AUG, making it look easy there. Picking up three quick kills for the squad. Uh, excuse me, for himself, four for the squad. And uh, again, Torch got such an interesting split here that I didn't see exactly how it unfolded if they were rotating through Torch, but probably just shot at from all angles uh, as they were trying to get to zone would be my guess. Yeah, I think exactly. It looks like someone who's even maybe up top a little bit here. One of the rocks got it to a good view. And look, P7 is actually our first team taking in the E pickup. Trying to find them right now. I can't actually spot them on my screen. They're all the way up in the air here. Looks like they might be able to land above Torch Stento. This could be really interesting and, and kind of really difficult for Torch. To careful. Tor Torch is probably going to recognize them. This is when you could risk getting shot out of the air. But P7 going to get down safely, and Merc is on his Lambo feed. He's trying to get out of the sight lines here. He's got Luca with the M16, providing a little bit of cover fire. Steels is going to have to be careful here. Steels actually fell off the backside, and there Fizz with the AUG, continuing to make that thing sing. Clyde goes down to some straight headshots, so they're going to be able to get that res off there, but they're going to need to be careful here. Playing with Torch is quite literally playing with fire. This is one of those things that I've heard some members in the community kind of complain about, Sento, is that when once you take these positions that were kind of previously, I mean, this was accessible, not as easily accessible with the E pickups. Once you're so high up, if you get knocked, it's almost impossible to get that flush, right? So P7 just has such a strong spot. The only downside is that they have to get off of here, but now there's parachutes. And then also you can't kind of replenish your ammo or throwables being up top here. Um, otherwise, this is a great spot for P7 to kind of hang in. Likewise, I don't know if they're going to be able to confirm that many kills, but they're getting some great shots on Torch Merc right there as he tries to run in, finally gets undercover. Yeah, just a little bit of the waiting game here. Most teams... We're able to find um, somewhere comfortable for phase one. We only lost that ZES squad to Torch here. Um, and these teams continuing to trade out shots, just picking up knocks on one another. This is uh, a long range battle that's gonna, it's gonna, something's gonna have to break here eventually. P7 is gonna have to move and they lifted into this location. So they're gonna have to be patient and hope that circle is kind of in their favor. Cause if not, they're gonna have a tough time rotating out of there with Torch with their eyes on them. <laughs> Yeah, it looks like there's also a lot of action sent to happening at the intersection east of Hacienda. I'm going to kind of, Hacienda, excuse me. I'm going to tap into an aerial view over here because we're seeing that chap from TXEU is kind of stuck at a rock. There's the other toxic team here on the hill. And RLX crashed this compound where Full was at and has been eliminated. We're seeing Undertaker Sly get taken out. Up. Yeah. Curious to what Chap is going to do here. Kind of stuck at this rock. Sly from long range got that knock sent with an eight times mini, one of my favorite weapons to use in PUBG. Yeah, that, that was, uh, I wasn't tapped into his perspective, but look where he is and look where the knock is. That's some impressive shooting through the windows there. And oh, the thirst comes out actually from the backside. From Frozen is going to pick that up from frozen now he's actually getting some shots from torch all the way up the hill so a lot of teams on the east side here kind of trading shots back and forth as the circle stento just pops to the west so all these teams including p7 are going to have to lose their position this is going to be a rough rotation for torch stento yeah i don't really think we are talking about how drastic of a pull that was i know it's just phase one to phase two but 
Um, very serious pull to the, the west side, northwest side, and now San Martin and Hacienda are your new center points, and several teams are, are kind of jammed up on that intersection we were looking at. So it's going to be quite a difficult rotation for all these teams that are on the east side. Yeah, and honestly, the compounds to the north of San Martin are all open. So most of San Martin's open. T1 is on the initial move here. I'm going to kind of watch them rotate and see how this goes. Oh, man, they're rotating right to Sly. He's Sly's only by himself, there. though. Stick is this down. Is probably best case scenario for T1, honestly. Sly is going to take to the roof, but the third parties are going to probably prevent him. I'm, oh, oh, man. Wow. Plots him. Sly doing all he can to kind of play the roof, avoid the third party shots there. Uh, but again, Infernix just swatted him too quickly, took him down with that AUG. They're going to confirm that kill. Toxic EU has been playing really well all morning. Uh, excuse me, all day. I keep saying that, Blitz. It's not the morning time. It is the nighttime in EU and it's afternoon here. But EU been playing, uh, Toxic EU has been playing really great all day, but they're reduced to just two players here in this game. Yeah, you know, it depends where you're at. Day, morning, night. But we'll, yeah. we'll give it to the EU crew because yeah. this is their games uh, tonight. Shout out to them. Uh, they, they have been playing well all night. Only a few teams not in the zone sent. K7 just made a huge rotation um, south, all the way southwest. Looks like they're going to try to come up maybe through Power Grid and then wrap into San Martin, one of those compounds. TXEU has been completely just separated from each other. Chap is still at this rock stento, and I think RLX knows now that he's just there, and nobody else is even here covering them him, so I'm surprised RLX hasn't gone for the push here. It looks like they might be considering it potentially, but now they go back inside. It looks like I, I just tapped into one of the TXC members. Benjo has got the ADEX on a mini, and he knows about Chap, and he knows about uh, RLX, so he's got eyes on both right now. Uh, Sento, I think we just saw... I just lost no, them, but a team was on the emergency pickup. It's the same team. It's P7. They, they had, had a plan two, all along. <laughs> they had two pickups, excuse me. They had a plan all along, Blitz, and here we were just saying they're goofy with no car and stuff. Little did we know. And they're going to take a great building. That's a very interesting route wow. to be able to play. You have a little bit of a kill box for cover, and, and they're going to have... Uh, it's going to be tough while people, um, this team seven, uh, excuse me, team 15 KO is up on that hill looking at them, but they're going to like this spot to, to try to pick up some kills as this all closes in around San Martin, I think. Yeah, what's interesting, Sento, if you guys didn't know on Miramar, PUBG has added in, many of these buildings are accessible now. They've added in boxes where you can get up to this fire escape, but this one does not have an accessibility there. So it's the only way you can get up here is by using this pickup. So they are in a great spot. This building obviously is very strong. Everybody knows familiar with that building and here we go the circle centering up with hacienda still center so euro dropped there and now they're still center and in a great spot yeah Euro's going to be comfortable for for a while here I, I think again that p7 team that just dropped on the roof is also going to be comfortable um i want to point out k7 one of our probably favorites on the eu region here they're starting to make their rotation. I love just to, uh, to tap into top teams when they're in these unfavorable position splits. So why don't we, until we see something kind of crazy break out on the kill, if you kind of watch these guys, they look like they're taking it all the way back around, but it's kind of uh, doing that whole avoid the city, super wide rotation deal here, and they, they're in no rush. Yeah, we might see... I'm not sure where they're going to enter in Stento here, where they're going to go. If they're going to run into KO here, or if they're going to go... The we're watching from right now, the map. You can just kind of see all the different sight lines people are shooting at each other with. It's a really good way to get um, an idea of who can see who um, and, and who is really kind of gatekeeping and has those sight lines on each other. So, um, again, Hacienda is just super centered up. Um, and there's a couple teams that just need to find their way into edge for now. Yeah, NES just took a good spot on the south side, but no one's going to be really crossing their pass on this K7 goes back that way. I'm really surprised they're they're going backwards. They already came from this direction. I just wonder what the, the call out is, like where are they going to crash? There's no buildings for them really to take at this point. They almost would have been better just going into San Martin and risking it, but you know, little do they know that there's really nobody there other than P7. This is uh, kind of what we were talking about earlier today, Blitz. Um, this 
EU competitive side for console is is so deep that we're 15 minutes into the game and there's 16 teams alive with 15 uh, excuse me 59 players and it's a very interesting circle so you can see how careful they take their rotations um, and now they're going back the other way Stento to sorry to interrupt you but they're going back the other <laughs> way now it's interesting <laughs> hey I, I we'll see how it pays off for them dead seriously this is um such an interesting rotation we're watching from them but almost everyone else has gotten into zone besides rlx who is actively being gate kept they tried to take a car blitz on this uh east side here and uh unfortunately they got spun out it's just two members here and they're in a world of hurt this is rlx you're talking about right here right i see they're yeah. stuck in the blue there i'm just kind of keeping on to k7 because we're gonna see them finally crash san martin but yeah rlx was really slow to move out of that compound and i think you're seeing them suffer from that um i don't know maybe they had a car situation car issues that compound yeah, can be seven has found their way into san martin um and and you're talking about the the rlx compound just a just a tough one to leave once you get into there oh yeah I think might be where you were, were going with that uh but this shift goes directly to the north hacienda is now uh, on the south side of zone, and we've got that big dip as now our new center point. Uh, almost all of San Martin has to come out, and this is kind of what we were talking about. This spot that P7 has is going to be so good for this rotation because there's three teams in San Martin, both on the high side and the low side, that need to kind of find their way around P7. The thing is that RMV long range hacker with the uh, M, excuse me, the Mini 14 does get a knock onto one of those P7 members, so. Preventing them from, from really uh, getting too many shots on people from this roof. K7 just spotted RS here going for a rotation. The mini has been really enforced today in Miramar. A lot of people rocking the mini, again, which is one of my favorite guns. So I like seeing people use that. It's really good for those long distance shots, especially with the eight time scope because of the bullet velocity being so much faster than the 762 DMRs. And Tiro, Tiro just got a FAMAS Stento. Uh, so awesome combo for them as they kind of push their way into San Martin. Such an interesting gun. I'm, I'm excited to, to see him put it to work here. I haven't seen it much on the competitive battlefield. Um, so I'm excited to see it in the hands of someone like Tyro, who, who is an absolute laser beam. So looks like Kiz is kind of leading the boys up towards this electrical grid here. Traits is waiting. They turn on denial. Qdex is not so quick. We knew you were there the whole time. Traits does open things up with a knock onto Gab. Kiza is there for that trade. Now it's only Pickle left that they need to deal with. Tyro's kind of leading the way into this electrical zone. Pickle does get a nice knock, but it's just going to be that uh, gun we were just talking about that gets the job done. They're going to need to get Kiza and Gab up quickly here. Uh, but that's some swift plays there out of K7, picking up four quick kills. Yeah, P7 had a couple shots in on Qdex and the members of K7 from the side. But again, because they're kind of committed to that building, they couldn't really maneuver and, and push this double knock here, right? So that's sometimes one of the curses when you get a good building like that. You kind of feel like you want to stay in that fortress. And now they, they couldn't really move and capitalize on any of the points there. Yeah, and, and they're still there. And um, if you take a look, like, unfortunately, you know, they were battling with Torch on the other side of the map, uh, lifted to this location, and they've just got nothing to show for it. Um, zero kills, which is just some unfavorable circles, uh, are really the, kind of some drastic pulls that, you know, really were unfavorable for them here. So be interesting to see how they do rotate out of this location now. They're going to have to deal with K7 in the process. Yes, yeah, so and NES just pulled up right above ko slayers went too far and ko takes out one of the members here nes is gonna i thought they were gonna push but they're actually just gonna rotate and on the other side we have code red fighting with torch goyami goes down right on the edge of blue not gonna be able to get up here torch Fizz is gonna have to try to make a big play two members of code red down Fizz gets a nice knock on takaki there with the with the frag this could be huge for Fizz, but he's the last member up so he doesn't have a lot to work with here yeah, these are our winners from game one and game two. Um, and Fizz, as a one man right now, trying to figure out if he can break down Code Red Gaming, who still has four players alive. Only two are on their feet, but those revives are coming out quickly. Um, and this is kind of in typical uh, EU fashion here. We just had 
uh 16 teams uh and 60 players alive and everything is happening so quick fizz is continuing to be a huge thorn in the side of this code red gaming here all he's trying to push up and get a little bit of an angle uh but fizz is just putting them back with the aug they got the smokes out to try to get the revive here and now all he's getting a really nice angle here against blue i'm not sure if fizz knows this is coming oh he fizz with the great the turn on him there through the smoke fizz is just putting on a clinic right now blitz Oh finally God, goes yeah, down there to cocky that was such a Woo! quick kill and thirst onto ollie you know ollie was just like a centimeter off we all know when that happens right you try to get right onto that person's body and then with a thumbstick it's just hard to make that adjustment and right now and yes is actually coming over the hill keeps gonna get caught out trying to go for the heal now cocky only has a little bit of health if nes starts wrapping here quickly they should be in a good spot but look traps actually on the shield the foldable shield with some extra cover on the top side. We're also seeing a lot yeah. of action here between T1 and TXC on the kill feed. And yes, they're gonna try to get this res off on uh, to res, excuse me, the res off onto res, but now it's two knocks. Cocky with the long range AUG is gonna take down Slayers with straight headshots there. And now what is um, just a two man for Code Red Gaming really being just such a problem for this Nitrous Esports squad, which was four deep. So these revives need to happen quick. Spirits is doing all he can to prevent any sort of a push uh, by the Code Red Gaming squad here, keeping them out of nade range. I think Knights is going to be able to get to four deep here, but as you can see in your kill feed, this is, is just everything is breaking out so fast. We've got a really good view on this NES squad trying to work their way around the edge and into this Code Red Gaming who is just putting up such a hard stand as a two man. I'm really surprised that Coder Gaming didn't try to push that. I mean, I know it would be risky, but they had him down to just two members there. So it seemed like it would have been a decent opportunity, especially an FPP to kind of get that push on the rock. Uh, but now they're here, kind of stuck at the rock. It was in a hard place with the zone right on their edge. They don't have to go too far, though. I think they can actually don't need to move Code Red with this zone. But we are going to see the next circle shift here in a second. I'm just going to pull up the map here. We also have some teams really converging on the north side. I might flip over there if RMV moves closer. Oh, yeah. Very close together here with Edge. And we have our first knock. I'm going to head over there as two knocks comes down. That's Coltsy and Copia down for Edge. Deco kind of leading the charge for RMV here with his teammates. M4 out looking over the hill. Hacker yeah, catches the heal. Yeah, the AA team played a little bit of a third party here in the back of Edge, so RMV was kind of able to just uh, kind of walk over them here. And a couple of knocks onto AE from another third party. It's just absolute chaos out here as AE tries to work their way in off the edge. The revive's kind of slowing down the entire process, but now T1, Kinetic One has showed up on the northeast side, and the third party is just not going to allow those edge players for uh, ace to, to get off of the the edge <laughs> yeah our edge is down people trying to work their way off the edge and rmv and ae are just locked into it here as t1 knows what's going on here ae actually works their way through rmv here so some impressive plays to pick up four kills but t1 is right there blitz yeah so really rmv ran into an a squad that was hitting some nice shots hacker went down which really stopped that push there and then kind of caught them out but then Woo t1 not playing around and Ruzi, I missed the kill from his perspective, but immediately takes out both members. And they were kind of hiding behind the rocks in the car there. So great shooting from T1. Looks like they're yeah, really... we might need to stay over here, Blitz. I didn't notice, but this team has got 13 kills. Ruzi was working wow. with a 3x on the AK to pick up those kills there. And, and a lot has happened in the late zone. And look at their spread. These guys are now center zone, sitting comfortably with 13 kills. They're going to have a field day of a round, Blitz. Oh, for sure. Now they spotted KO. They already got one knock. This is Kiss. We oh saw them gosh. in the kill feed, just didn't realize that they had that many kills. And uh, I think a lot of them, not a lot, but a handful might have just come at the end there as they kind of pushed on the third or fourth party that was happening on the north side. Some some great shots out from Kiss there. Uh, and meanwhile, his team teammate Ruzi is still picking up kills onto another team. So Genetic One is in such a good position here that they can just kind of have fish in a barrel shots on the rest of the lobby right now yeah you're absolutely right ruzi's able to just shoot to the left here with stick as, as the other two members of t1 look to the right and and ruzi are almost picking up another kill but it goes to the play zone just pulling in these slr shots at a distance stick picks up one of them up to 15 yeah, yeah. kills now stento 
yeah they're, they're picking him up left and right t1 uh amazing job to already put 16 on the board now blitz this is going to be a record books type around we still have 14 players around uh in the lobby and t1 is just in commanding position there's so much mutual destruction happening between wc and euro right now that we have to get into hacienda and see what's going on a lot of knocks here in hacienda we're just coming in a little late here Bueno gets eliminated. Sorry we missed that. It was just Nosono, Nosino, which was down, but they're getting him up. Oh, one member of its core traps was in the garage. I have no idea how this member for Code Red Gaming got over here, but they have three kills and they found themselves in the top four here uh, through all of the fighting happening around them. Uh, uh, Traves is able to sneak his way into Hacienda and perhaps play... Um, a big thorn in the side of Team Euro here, but meanwhile, there's another 4v4 breaking out on the other side of the map as KO tries to find their way off of an edge position, um, but they've got T1 with, with some pretty heavy focus on them. Yeah, so it's tough because I think KO wants to shoot in on Hacienda. We have Ben trying to look that way, but really the bigger threat that they know, obviously, is T1. What's interesting here is that look at the open cover here that T1 might have to leave their ridge, right? If this circle kind of keeps centering up. I haven't seen this circle in a while, Stento, so I'm not sure where exactly this is going to go and who really has the advantage. Both KO and T1 are kind of on this ridge. Anyone coming out of Hacienda isn't going to be really strong enough here, I think, to to make a big play. It's nice that Stickos for T1 is on, on this kind of outside anchoring this spot here. So that could be a big factor. Yeah, I think that most recent shift was, was pretty good for KO. They're, they're sitting with a little more zone. They've got some ridges and some hard cover. Uh, T1 have now wrapped back to their solo. As you were saying, they're using the northeast side to kind of wrap all the way back. Um, there's still two players left in Hacienda um, and a solo in there. So there's going to be something that breaks down here, but it doesn't have to happen and for another shift or two. And in the meantime, Tenetic One is using some cars to kind of get to that ridge underneath Hacienda. It's going to be a great spot for them to play if they can get there as a four man. They're going to need to keep an eye on KO, though. That's really going to be the biggest problem here. And I'm watching Benzie kind of just rip some AUG shots in their direction. He's really the um, got the best angle. 4KO right now, but some some good shots are gonna push him back a little bit. And T1 all playing that same ridge now. That's really gonna, gonna come down to uh, it's really gonna come down to Ruzi's position versus Ben here. They're both kind of holding the angle of their spot, um, basically from the wall of where KO is at to the ridge here on Hacienda. Ben almost goes down. Ruzi's just on point today with the SKS. Yeah, and as we were talking about a little earlier, they already have 16 kills. So they're going to be looking to close this game out in grand fashion. I think Ruzi's trying to figure out if it's possible for him to get under that ridge um, that he's kind of looking at. He's peaking that KO squad, and I think that would be a valuable spot if he was able to kind of get into that location underneath them, um, really preventing them. He's going to use the car for this risky exactly play here, Sento. Just calling it out. You're, you're right. If he gets up there, or is he just trying to get a little bit more a little bit of an edge cover. here? I think he did that in case he gets knocked, Stenta, that he could maybe hide behind this wheel. But I, I don't know if it's going to be enough cover, honestly. But uh, any any more, I think, helps. I'm going to get into a aerial view so we can just see what's going on. Core, look at this. T1 has actually moved a little bit more into Hacienda. I just wonder how aggressive they're going to get, Stenta. It could backfire, right, if they get into a fight with Code Red here. Then again... KO is going to have the same issue with the Euro squad. There's still two left on the west side. Yeah, yeah honestly, Blitz, I think both T1 and KO kind of want to play the third party right now. They want the other team to kind of get locked into whatever is coming out of Hacienda so that they can then push on it. Um, again, it's a little bit of a waiting game here until Hacienda gets circled out. But Tulens is actually going to open things up with a knock onto No Sino. Um, and it's actually Kiss got on the roof, Sento. Yep, it's one of the members of T1 that gets in there and cleans that up. Now it's just Traves in Hacienda and then two four-mans kind of waiting between Tenetic 1 and KO here. Knockout. Yeah, I like this view actually for Kiss to stay on the edge here on the roof of Hacienda. He might be able to catch out Chris here, someone that's not really aware. He actually shot a little too early and now Chris is going to try to find cover with Ben. 
he might have been able to get an early knock there. They're aware that this guy's on the roof now. Nate's coming in. Don't doesn't take any damage. Chris gets a big oh, knock Ruzi. on Ruzi. That's a big loss for Ruzi. Yeah, Ruzi was making the flank that they kind of needed, but he, he went a little bit too wide and he got spotted. Yeah, he got a little antsy there, but kind of smart play. I understand he wants to make a move, I assume. Tra Traves is still a little bit of an X factor here, and I, I actually want to correct myself. This, this team KO is kicked out, um, not knocked out, so I apologize for the mispronunciation there, but uh, it kicked out really in a great spot here now that they got rid of Ruzi. Yeah, Marco's moving up. I tapped in yeah, his perspective. He's pushing right it. here against Infernex. Stickers is right behind him as well. I don't know if Infernex knows that he's there yet. He spots him. The fight comes down. Infernex wins that. Kiss also gets the final knock onto Traves there. Wow, well, great push by one of the members of uh, Kicked Out here. But Traves are going back and forth. Benzie with a big 1v1 versus Stickers here. But Tools is trying to get involved. Traves has been taken out in the meantime. Now it's just... Benzi and Batulans, they got stickers to deal with. He jumps down and does a little bit of the prone. Oh my gosh, it's just but one has no health left. left. He gets it done. And Sticka. He jumps off the cliff blitz. He does the animation where you can't even move. Snaps into a prone position in in grand fashion. As we said, Tenetic One gets the chicken dinner with 22 kills. Unbelievable finish there. I kind of got caught switching between the players, but we saw some great 1v1 fights, which is what you want to see in that first person perspective. Stick us with a nine bomb. Insane finish there and great point. Both a couple players there had to pull out their DMRs because they were running out of ammo and, and trying to get the final kill. Unbelievable. So T1 coming in first place with the biggest game of the day so far, followed by KO with just four kills but still great for them making it into second place code red gaming in third place with four kills of their own and in fourth was euro with six total kills so that was our end of game three stento we'll take it to the webcam here for a second so we can say hello to everybody again um another team winning which you like to see we kind of missed a lot of their early action so then we tuned into them they had 13 kills they ended with 22, I think you said, which was unbelievable. And uh, honestly, Incredible. just a great game for them. Uh, anything of no other than that finish from them that you want to talk about? Oh, I, I guess it's mainly the, the shifts that we've been watching today. There's been just some rude circle shifts. Drastic, you know, very hard north pulls or, or to one direction or the other. Um, and it's just been uh, impressive to watch some of these teams make some ridiculous rotations um, and, and win some of these fights on, on edge. Um, and, you know, some teams very confidently and almost easily playing out of center from, from good positions. So uh, it's amazing to see first Torch, then Code Red Gaming, um, and now Tenetic won three different winners through our first three matches. Um, we're going to be right back on the old dusty desert of Miramar with match four in just a moment. We're getting that lobby set up now. Um, and hopefully we'll be able to get the scoreboard up here updated for you. Um, yeah, we'll take a, we'll, yeah, we'll yeah. take, we'll take a look now and see you. Hopefully it's updated. If not, we'll be back in the intro and we'll see you guys soon. All right, let's, let's take a look here. We have total scoreboard, which I don't think has completely updated, but you guys can see the team list here. We'll have to try and refresh this troubleshoot that, but we do, I think have our, Kill stats so far for today. And this seems to be updated because QDEX has been on an absolute absolute roll with the eight kills in first place. Two members of Code Red Gaming up on there as well, being Keebs and Cocky, full and swift, third and fourth for their respective teams as well. And let's take a look at our damage leaders for today so far. I guess that doesn't want to load, so we'll we'll refresh that and be back. So for now, we have our kill leaders, and we'll work on getting the scoreboard updated for y'all. Thank y'all for tuning in, and we'll be right back.
All right, here we are for game four of the NA versus EU showdown. This is just day one. This is EU first, then later tonight we'll be back for NA. So again, this is game four or five on Miramar. We have our plane path going from Puerto Pariso all the way to Alcantara as the team drops. We just refreshed the leaderboards. It should be working now. Let's give it a try real quick so we can take a look at the current scoreboard. This probably isn't including that last game because it takes T-Wire a little while to update. So far, this is the scoreboard as of two games, both Aaron Gulls. And again, now we're on to game four. So Code Red was in the lead before that one, but we just saw T1 with that huge game there with 20 plus kills with the dub on Miramar. And so far, Stento, seeing a few different things happen here. I'm seeing maybe a team landed pretty close together, P7 and ZES to the west of Los yeah, a Leones. Little of a, a little bit of a two, two on two situation here at a very popular compound. We've all camped this compound and waited for people to rotate around us. Um, unfortunately, uh, whoa, that, that was a, there you go. There was a 2-2 and my, my screen was kind of lagging out a little bit there, but ZES is going to get both of those kills. Um, both going to Ghost, uh, ASF and, um, unfortunate for Platinum 7, losing half their squad nice and early here. Yeah, I was kind of showing the leaderboards during that drop, so I didn't see those two teams drop right exactly on each other. Uh, but we have the first circle pop for... Game oh, please, four. Island Blitz, please. Me and you have had a lot of crazy circles uh, over our year or two of casting, but I don't know if we've seen today. one. I don't know if we've seen an island together, Stenta. I can't remember the last time I saw an island zone in PUBG competition in a while. I, I think it happened on like one of BGE lands. I remember watching it and I was just like so pumped up about it. But uh, this circle is going to be uh, great for this squad in Impala RS. Um, as well as K7, who's got a, uh, a classic K7 split there. I believe the NA side lands in the same area uh, and kind of splits that same location. Where was that sent to? I missed that last part. Uh, the, K the K7, um, NA does the same exact split oh, yeah, on yes. Miramar when they drop. So it's interesting to see um, the EU side mimic that a little bit. But kizza has got the boys in a nice spread here. And the rest of the map has got to just rotate so far, Blitz. So um, if teams like Torch and K7 can get set up here, they're going to have a field day with all of these teams trying to rotate through them. Yeah, so funny you say that because, you know, K7 was the evolution of GT. And G this was GT's landing spot and then went into K7. I don't even think there's any really remaining members on the American side from that original GT squad. Maybe, maybe one or two. Uh, but that is actually such a smart spot. It's underrated because... No one's going to be contesting you there. So you can get your loot and, and, and kind of figure out your strategy for there. And for me, and for a lot of these teams, you want to stay alive in the beginning, right? You, you, I know some people like the hot drop, but for me, you want to be alive and available so you can get some points later on in the game. And K7 is usually there, but we haven't seen a strong finish from them yet, I don't think. Um, and I, I forget where they are on the leaderboards, but they're definitely making some noise. Qdex was the kill leader so far with eight kills going into that last match. So he's been playing very well. He also had the P90 once or twice today. So that also helped a lot there too. Yeah, it looks like K7 is kind of um, grouping up a little bit, trying to figure out what exactly they want to play here for these early rotations. But as you mentioned, uh, K7 has, has had a decent day. They've been picking up kills as they always done, but they haven't um, put the cherry on top of, of one of these rounds yet um, for the win. So we'll keep an eye on them here. If you're just tuning in, uh, we want to welcome you guys to the, the main gaming North America versus EU showdown. Uh, we're in match four of our first day for the EU side. So if you're from EU and you're tuning in, we hope you're having a nice evening. We want to welcome you to to one of our main gaming events. Um, we're going to be here Monday and Tuesday for the next three weeks while we whittle, whittle this uh, field of 17 EU teams down to eight for the finals to take on uh, the exact same thing for the NA side, um, which will debut tonight at 8 p.m. Eastern right here uh, on Blitz 5's channel. So again, we want to thank you all for tuning in today while we wait for this first circle up, while these teams get looted up and start their rotations. Um, we really do want to uh, welcome you guys to these events. Um, and once again, remind you that uh, almost all of these 
teams are required to be live uh streaming or on a delay right now so um if you're interested to go into any of their streams please don't hesitate to ask we'll try to give you those locations um i really uh want you guys to go pump up these squads and the organizations that are competing here today um so thank you very much for for tuning in today and blitz some rotations happening out on the north side our winners from last round t1 Getting some shots onto uh, Euro, who uh, was also one of our final uh, finalists in that last Miramar game. It didn't look like any knocks came out of there. Euro oh, down to three members here. I'm not sure if they had a lag out or an early death. I didn't exactly see it, um, but they are going to get through T1. Um, who again, if you're just joining us, T1, uh, Tenetic 1 had a 22 kill chicken dinner um, with just an amazing, amazing ending uh, towards Hacienda. So we'll have to keep an eye on them here. Yeah, Zento, I am tuning into RMV is doing a really low rotation. They should be okay. Excuse me, but steals from P7 might have a viewpoint here on top of this hill with the M4, the mini, could get a spray here. Maybe take out a tire. Trying to see where the rest of P7 is located. Some initial shots coming down. Don't think it's going to be enough. I thought maybe the whole of P7 was here and could surprise RMV, but I don't think Steels by himself is going to be able to do enough damage there. Yeah, it's just half of the squad that's gotten through. Uh, Takashi and, and Ben M's leading the way. The rest of uh, results may vary. It looks Taking like their time here. A couple of... Uh... Orange coops working the uh, shores here, and as you mentioned, it's it's P7 waiting for them, but they're, they're spread, and it's not really enough to to get a tire or blow up a car or anything right now. So RMV with the four vehicles um, are going to be able to rotate through through this area. Yeah, it looks like P7 is just down to two members. It looks like they loaded in with three, and no mercy died. Uh, I'm not sure if again they had an issue with the fourth player or or whatnot. Oh, we there. watched we watched P7. Uh, they hot dropped with oh, uh, right. ZES. They lost both their members. That's so right. That was if initial someone hot does drop. die and they and they back out, it pulls it them pulls, from the bottom left. Yes, um, yeah. But yeah, I didn't know if the same thing happened with the Euro earlier, but. I think we're seeing some airlift. Sento, airlift. I'm on it. Yeah, I'm on the airlift here. Winner circle has a knock bueno on the top of this this hill K here. K7's on the south side of the hill hanging out. Um, and NES just dropped in as well. So I think almost two teams tried to drop on the same location at the same time. <laughs> and we're just seeing knocks on, on Kizza for K7. I think that res is going to happen. I mean, the res just happened on Bueno. So this is just a crazy crazy example of what we were speaking about last match the emergency airlifts uh recently being brought to PUBG esports brings such a crazy dynamic especially for this Miramar map as you can just lift onto any of these crazy mountains so we'll have to keep a close eye on this WC team with a little bit of height advantage over K7 but that does not matter when you can shoot like these K7 boys so uh, they got the revive onto Kizza, and now they got to figure out their next play. Tyro gonna need to do a little bit of dance, and he's not gonna be able to get away from those shots. Ghost with the AUG takes him down. Yeah, and Pole had a great sight line, and one of the other members of WC, but they get away. They're actually pushing. Uh, excuse me, that was K7 pushing to the right there. Kiz is now locked in behind this rock. Not sure they're how, how they're gonna move on this. Kind of curious where the other members of K7 are going, Stento. They just ran. They kind of just sprinted to the left there and are leaving Kizza to fend by sure. himself. It might be a Kizza might have called a, a cut and run situation to try and get two of his teammates out of there because I'm not sure. Um, I'm not sure if they're going to be able to get over to Kizza and I'm not sure if Kizza is going to be able to get to Tyro. So I, th I think it's kind of a... Um... Well, it looks like they pulled these two vehicles. Qdex and Gav are actually rotating in a coupe and a bike. Looks like they oh, might try to I go behind that. the compound, get to Tyro, and then maybe get Kizza back this so way. Kizza's just going to hold... Kizza's just kind of covering while the other two do this ridiculous rotation to save their teammate. They're going to be able to get Tyro up here if they get into this compound because he's got cover with this ridge here. Uh, plenty of cover if you actually get into uh, Tyro's location, but the angles from above are just daunting. Ghost is up so high, and the other three are just slightly lower than him with a, with a, a much different angle. So there's a lot to worry about for K7 here, but Gav going to get a smoke down for a little additional cover. Um, oh, Ooh, the nade goodness. comes in from Ghost. Meanwhile, I kind of want to tap in here. We're seeing RLX just pull up on Torture on the beach, and Torch, I think, just kind of traded back finally on one of the members of RLX. We'll tap back to K7 in a second here. After we just saw that monster nade from top of the hill. Wow, yeah, this is a big battle breaking out, but Torch 
seem to be making it look easy here. We, we got into the area a little late, so I'm not sure who pulled up on two, but two members are already down for RLX. Torch moves quickly, and um, they've got three members weak, four members weak here, so they're going to need to heal up and, and regroup for a second. Um, and the main thing to note is that they're kind of on the edge. They're going to have to rotate... Uh, either pass or through this RLX squad. Um, and several teams are on their way. If you take a look at your map blitz, Toxic EU is about to travel through AE here, as well as Code Red Gaming. Um, and, and T1 has also just kind of pushed through the center of zone. So several teams rotating here. Um, and we still got 16 teams alive and 58 players. Yeah, so what happened is RLX had knocked a member or two of Torch, but they were so far away that they couldn't really capitalize on it. And by the time they pushed, Torch was back up and ready for the push and were able to kind of return fire on RLX there. Great resilience shown from Torch once again. Uh, and phase three will be circling up. Excuse me. Phase two will be circling up here slowly um, in just a couple seconds. But so many teams are already kind of centered up in Impala. That this is just uh, another tough circle because there's some, some cities and some hardcover, some of those crazy rock cliffs, um, but then there's also a lot of open area here to work with Blitz. So teams are kind of cozied up in their areas for now. Few need to find their way into this second phase, uh, phase three eventually, but um, for now it's a little bit of, uh, again, uh, the waiting game here while we wait towards, uh, wait until these zones circle up. Yeah, and P7 right now is on a rotation in the water all the way to the east. They might get a care package. They might drive past it. We'll see. Might not be enough time for them to stop. They're stuck in the water here. Excuse me. Where is that care package? They passed. It wasn't on. I guess they didn't want to risk stopping there. Maybe they just didn't see it. Yeah, it might have dropped early, but a couple more uh, care packs actually just d double dropped in the uh oh in the vicinity the land, yeah. yeah pretty close by like you mentioned sento these have not been easy circles for anybody i mean there's no easy circle in PUBG, but these have really included some weird terrains the big hills yeah, kind of unpredictable shifts yeah. um drastic shifts like mid mid late game which has just made it so hard for some of these teams who really thought they were centered up you know uh for end game <laughs> so it's it's been a very interesting day of PUBG. Uh, the teams are handling it well we've seen four different uh, excuse me three different winners throughout the course of the day so far um and we're gonna have to wait and see uh who takes home game four here tx EU up. Yep. got the got the groza my personal favorite gun uh in the game and they were able to get this compound i forget who was there it was i i wonder if they took him out oh no rlx left I see them, they're right above Impala here. So they're still alive. TX took this spot and now can move in kind of free here. Circle closed in on itself. This one, not so bad, Sento. This one basically just centered up. The question is, will it go to Impala? Will it leave the hill? Obviously, the big mountains are unplayable, so it's going to have to come off that a little bit, but just what direction will it be to the west here? A lot of times, sometimes these circles tend to go north up to where NES is, or they'll go south kind of by the gas station. This one seems like it's going to go north center and could potentially end on NES or RLX. I'm kind of thinking it might go that way. Yeah, it is a, a very interesting circle right now with Impala basically dead center. There, there's two mountain peaks, both to the north of in, northwest of Impala and, and southeast of Impala that are, are very playable, whether you have an airlift um, or can climb up there in some instances, instances here. Um, and Winter Circle, as we saw, have been on that, that southern peak for a while. Um, and they're going to kind of be holding out Platinum 7 here if you do take a look at the sight lines that they have uh, on your map now. Um, it's a really good view to just kind of see all these different teams try to maneuver their way into zone here. And it's actually Big Dog taken down steals who is his uh, kind of far away from clyde i'm not sure if they're going to be able to get this res i'm trying to get a different angle yes yeah, steals does have a little bit of cover here but it's going to be a risky rotation um by clyde here who's just kind of using the, the lowest angle he can but some big shots still coming out from wc here are making this uh, a very very tough uh revive for him yeah this is a really tough spot for clyde on the beach, not much love for P7 here today. <laughs> Dodging some bullets though at the tree, making a stop. I think you'll be able to get the steals here, but will they be able to move on? Eventually, Winter Circle is going to need to think about what they want to do. I mean, they're still in the zone for a while, but 
Do they have a plan? Do they have another emergency pickup? Who knows? So Blitz, I think we missed it. A team is going to be dropping out of the sky or an airlift was just about to go. I think Code Red was about to take it. I'm trying to figure out where the squad went. Are they already on the ground? Yeah, that was very confusing because they had a, an airlift, but someone got grenaded on, uh, while it was about to happen, I think. Uh, but now Code Red Gaming as a three man have found themselves directly up against the, uh, the two man for Torch. So you're saying that Code Red might have been trying to leave and then got had to abandon it and now are stuck I, in Impala? I saw an airlift and then one of them was grenaded. I think that TXC on the north side might have caught them trying to take the airlift in and maybe got one of them. But yeah, I wasn't even on it myself. Um, but I was trying to read the kill feed and understand what was going on because I could see on my map that they were taking an airlift. So it was <laughs> kind of a confusing moment. But um, nonetheless, Code Red Gaming is safely in Impala as a three man and, and they only lost one out of the situation. Situation. Yeah, and Travis was just hitting some nice long-range shots with SLR. I thought he was going to get the knock there, but didn't come down. We're going to see the circle shift again. A little bit of lull in action because we, we did see kind of a drop in teams here, and this is still a pretty big circle. And now we have the circle. It actually goes northwest here. It do, did go north. I, I was kind of feeling that north shift. Now there's a lot of different areas to play. And against a, that, a pretty though, interesting open. Uh, battle breaking out on the northeast of everything. Blitz, uh, Toxic EU. I'm watching Chap right now. He's got a, the Groza in his hand in a very interesting location, kind of watching uh, the, the Toxic Esports team. So both teams uh, got the Toxic in their name. It's Toxic EU versus Toxic Esports here. Um, and Chap's actually going to elect to back off a little bit um, while Sly presses up and gets a knock onto Shang-D. I think that's going to be stolen. It's actually Code Red Gaming Cocky who steals the kill. Um, so one down for TXC. Um, and that's Sly again with the AUG taking down both long range threats for TXC. So now it's up to Benjo and Frozen who are up against this mountain now. Sly didn't realize Benjo it made caught. that flank, so he's going to go down. Some great shots out of the M4 of Benjo. Um, and now it's a two on three. So things get a little more interesting here with this mountain in play. Yeah, so I guess the team just decided to leave because they didn't want to get caught by the blue that is coming in right now. They, they could have maybe stayed strong and took out TXC, but sometimes you got to cut your losses here because it's going to be a tough rotation in for TX. Tough move there, Stento. I'm not sure if this will pay off. We'll see. Yeah, I think I think they're starting to get into the buildings. I'm watching Full and, and, and Chap and Swift work their way off the mountain. So Ooh, we have a pickup here. Sorry to interrupt you, RLX. I think they're trying to wait till last minute, or are they baiting it? I think they're waiting till last minute, Stento. Rune is trying to get on. Undertaker's not there. Undertaker gets stuck by himself. <laughs> Didn't give enough time to get on the emergency pickup. We'll try to pay attention to where though. Runa is. <laughs> RLX, he's going to go for the mountain. Gonna be able to play it. Unfortunately, I don't know why he didn't get his teammate there. Can Runa get onto this mountain? It is where all eyes on the entire map are. Unfortunately for Runa, it's 51 oh, eyes. Oh no! And right as he gets down, Frenzy for kicked out, who had a great game last game on Miramar. I'm trying to figure out exactly where this kicked out team is. They're way over here, Blitz, on the ramps. <laughs> Wow, kicked out all the way to the west there. And wow, so many people coming in on the east side, Stento, on the north and south side of the east side. We're going to watch Winter Circle right now. Try to make it in with Edge, playing the Edge, sticking to their name. We've seen them kind of playing Edge a lot today, actually, so far. Blitz, these games are insane. There's still 48 players alive, 15 teams. Pole has got an AWM, is going to take down that ZES squad, but... Try to keep your eyes on the kill feed because a lot is going to happen right now. Winner's Circle, as you said, being held out by Edge right now. So I'm going to try to kind of get into one of their perspectives and see what Winner's Circle can do here. Yeah, I'm watching Ghost right now. He just pushed up against the building with Big Dog that there's actually an enemy right in that building. They just don't know he's there. If they hop in here, they could easily get eliminated. And just as I call it, Big Dog taken out. Bueno trying to get the trade. He does. They come down with another kill on Colza. In the building across the way. Yeah, they're going to be able to res Big Dog here. They they quickly got in there and took Kupia down. Um, and then long range Colty. Um, and now Pammy from the north side gets taken down by Pickle. And it's only Prim V's up now. So what was a four-man edge is getting just ripped through by YWC. And, and the, the third parties are not helping edge here at all. Yeah, I think it helps that Winter Circle is playing together tight here when... Edge was kind of split up in different buildings and different rooms. They did get the revive off here. Winter Circle Ghost trying to enter the building on the bottom floor. 
Finally makes it in. Just got stunned. Be trying to go up the stairs. You're going to need more teammates here to get up there. No lethal. It's just a lot of smoke right now. I think I did hear a molly come out. It might have been from Edge trying to delay. Bueno shoots to the door and actually catches a headshot. Or, or at least oh a kill. Oh my gosh. I was in Primvi's perspective there while he was just hanging out in this room, dodging a molly. Those shots through the door are ridiculous. That was crazy. I was on Bueno's right there. perspective. I think he just went for it and got him there. Great oh move. Oh my gosh. Amazing shots. They're going to be able to get this res off in here. Colty is, is, is back into the scene here and might be able to get that res off. He does get Prim V up. Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tap into an aerial view because there's just one left. It's just Colty. And there's other teams in the area. Sento said there's so many people alive. The circle shifted out of Impala. So all these teams are going to have to leave now. They did get the revive off there. I'm surprised. Winter Circle's trying to move on, but now they're getting third party from RS, who's just sticking in this building, laying down fire on both these teams now, Edge and Winter Circle. And now P7's here as well, Stento. I'm going to stay in the aerial view because we have four or five teams in this area right now. I love it. I love it. It is it is tough to kind of figure out exactly what is going on, but there is kills all over your kill feed. Swift picking up a kill onto Cocky for Code Red Gaming, and it just doesn't stop. Winner Circle trying to get out of the city, but there's just too much fire from RMV, and I think a little bit from T1 as well on this side of the map. So it's just been insane, insane. Uh, Tough rotation for these uh, teams trying to get out of Impala because there's so many teams in there, um, and especially this. Uh, RS squad was just four deep hanging out on the edge. So, so much mutual carnage going on here. RS is still three deep. One member for edge, two for torch. Uh, Toxic E wasn't able to get out of there. And again, just knocks going down on both sides here. But Bree just made a really good play and now is trying to help out the rest of his team. But the zones here. Is he going to go down to the zone or from a shot? He's going to get this first aid off and be okay. But when you leave Impala, there's just nowhere to go. You can try to lay down on the road, but not enough time for that to happen there. And they're eliminated in Sento just like that. It always happens around this 22-minute mark going into Phase 6. We're down to just six teams and 19 players after we just had so many people alive. It's been every match today. We, we go from 59 down to 20-ish players in a matter of, you know, five minutes. And it's just ridiculous. Uh, kicked out is pushing up on Tenetic One here, who have like a little bit of a, a spread. So it's going to be interesting to see what um, Kiss can do from the side while the rest of his team is, is hung, hanging out in that shack. Yeah, back to I think just got a nade shot. in there. Gets the double kill on the T1 in the shack. Great nade oh there. Gosh. And now they spot Kiss out in the open, trying to get that red dot spray with the AUG. Sometimes it's steady. Other times it's not right there. It was pretty hard to control. Doesn't get the knock yet. Yeah, that is just such a valuable name from Batool and getting two players there. And now Marco taking a little bit of an angle onto RMV here. There's still a solo out there for T1. I think uh, Chris 4KO is about to find him here. They can't actually get that kill, but RMV is still a four man on this edge trying to work their way in. And there you go. The solo is going to go down, uh, kicked out, picking up all those kills uh, led by Batulins there. So GG's to KO, taking out the winners from last round, Tenetic one. And things have shaped up pretty quickly here, Blitz, down to our final four teams. Yeah, this is game four for people potentially just tuning in. Game four to five, day one. This is the EU part portion of the showdown here. Final four teams. Marco is getting some nice shots with the SKS. Seeing a lot of the SKS in the mini today, which I like, not just the SLR. I mean, the men Blitz, been... want to bring your, your Attention yeah, sure. to the Northeast. Big fight breaking out between AE and Nitrous Esports. There's already a knock for NES, but they've got a little bit of a gear to work with. With the barrel, made a big play. Gets knocked himself. Now that Slayers has to step up, but it's not enough, and they just got eliminated from AE. Cliff with some big shots there to get them off of their ridge peak, but uh, unfortunately wow. he gets third partied from one of the members from RMV. The smokes are out here. They might be able to get this res off here, um, but it's going to be a kind of up to what happens between this ko rmv 4v4 dude uh, rmv is starting to push up blitz here but the split from ko is very interesting yeah so happy we caught that action man we're trying to fill us in here bringing all of our stations i'm kidding but you know we got to catch the action so many things always happening here <laughs> a nice triangle going on between ko ae and rmv really ae here we haven't really been talking about them too much today because they play really well in these fights, but then I feel like we keep seeing them on the kind of the wrong side of zone today, you know, and that's 
they're, I feel like they're in that position again right now because this is most likely <laughs> going to come down to KO and RMV. Yeah, KO seems to kind of have the dominant split, and they have that ridge. If, if you do take a look at your map, it's a very interesting ridge that's in the center. RMV kind of standing on it right now, but if they favor the left side of that, they're going to open up the sight lines of basically all of KO. So they're kind of hanging out on top, hanging out on the back right of this ridge, waiting for AE to have to push off of the edge of zone, um, and, and kind of trying to figure the, the right way to push into zone, because this, this split from KO is just so interesting. I have no idea if they have... Um, um, an idea that Benzi has this angle blitz. Benzi pushed all the way down the road, totally separate from his squad, and he can really, really play spoiler for the oh, round. But he, he gets, gets hacker. wrecked by Hacker with a crazy beam with the barrel, switching scopes. I think he was on the six times for that spray, wow. which really, really stopped that that angle, which that was going to be forced his KO to push up here. And it might open a little bit of a door for AE to kind of back. Oh, the nades the are coming in from KO. They're playing so aggressive. They lost position on RMV, and KO went in so they strong did exactly there. Exactly what they needed to do, Blitz. They got rid of RMV as quick as possible. But as I mentioned, it opened the door for AE to push into the best spot in zone. So now what looked like an impossible push in for AE has turned into maybe this is our game to win. It's a three v three with the knock on the edge of zone here, and they've almost got Marco knocked as well. So AE now in a little bit of a dominant position. Stento, you couldn't have predicted how that just went. Everyone had the strongest. It was like RMV. KO has the strongest spot. RMV. <laughs> then now it's AE. That it was a crazy so right. triangle fight there that just kept rotating. Um, but still, KO kind of still has the better spot. Not really though. It really comes down to where is the circle going to shift to. I think Benzi's a lost member of the squad. I don't think they're going to be able to get him up. Really yeah, comes down what's to in, what's interesting, Blitz, is it works its way into a little bit of a valley in the center of these two teams. So they're going to have to come off of their like their little bit of height or, or uh, off their knolls that they have and towards that center uh, valley. So as that happens, that's when the real fight is going to break out here. Um, and as the confirmation comes out onto Ben Z, we've got a true 3v3 going down here. Yeah, so I'm just taking a look. It's going to come down to me who has some smokes and who can make, obviously, the big plays as always. Looks like AE only has three smokes remaining when KO has a ton of smokes left. It's going to be a very important factor in this fight, but it looks like AE is is taking no time um, and, and, excuse me, wasting no time and pushing up in a pretty good zone. PO's got a rock now. Not as kind of holding anchor on the, on the, um, for this north side, Arch as well is trying to kind of find their way into zone. Um, and this shift does favor them slightly, um, but those smokes from KO are going to come out sooner than later. Um, going to be very interesting it's going to be who can land the shots can yeah, ko ooh, work their way through all the smokes they have into the zone po is pushing into a very I, good spot but po they spotted him and they have throwable still here stento but Tulens has four nades so if they catch po if he gets too close he might be in nade territory which could be really bad also i want to point out that nada has a bolty and ko have been peeking him pretty hard here so if he gets a big knock this could be you know the pushable moment that ae needs potentially so Two things to look out for. I think we're going to see a nade on PO potentially, or a big knock from Nada could turn the tide here. Nada is letting those things fly, man. Oh, he does take a big headshot there. Helmet animation popping off. Only nine health here. He's going to get the first aid off. That's Nada. And um, again, just a nice 3v3 here. It's going to come down to who can hit the shots. Blitz, I think PO's perspective is incredibly interesting here. He's got the overwatch from his two teammates here, and he's underneath the entire KO team, kind of gatekeeping them. As soon as they have to push off this hill, he's going to be smacking them with them th this M4. Yeah, with Santos, that was such a big point because they do have to come this way, and he's starting to see a little bit of the heads of KO, and I think he wants to make a move here, and he Geo finally decides, and he's got a shotgun here as a secondary. Moving close, it doesn't do that much distance at range, though. He goes down after the trade and they're gonna get the quick flush here nada also got taken down there i missed that so now oh, it's a 1v2 very interesting ko wastes no time blitz po had what what looked like full control of this situation but unfortunately switched to the shotgun from too long of range and he paid for it so po wasn't able to get the job done it's kicked out but the 11 kill chicken dinner um ae picking up six kills in the second place um, and rounding out the top three in match four of the evening is RMV, and they had seven kills. Yeah, very nice. GG's, everybody. I'm going to take us to the screen so we can say hello to everybody again.
Sento, what a crazy ending there. I love the shotgun play. I've definitely seen a lot of people do that. I like to do that at the end, but I, I've actually had that same thing happen to me where you pick up the shotgun, you're like, this is going to be awesome once I'm in close range. But the double barrel shotgun, while it's so powerful up close, as soon as you get to that distance, it's so weak. I saw him hit him with the second shot. It only took a sliver or like a you know, an eighth of his health away or six of his health away. Uh, so ultimately that kind of hurt him because he had the jump on that second player. Um, but either way, KO was playing so well there that it was going to be a tough, tough victory for AE. What do you think? Yeah, I mean, I'm impressed with with kicked out. I'm not really familiar with this KO team, but back to back Miramar games, they found themselves in really good position. Um, and that was an impressive hold by that that three man there after they lost um, Benzi, who was kind of playing their flank role there. Uh, Again, I, I thought that P.O. was going to kind of peek up and get a triple kill there and kind of clutch up for A.E. after we thought that they were kind of just in an impossible spot held out by those two formans of RMV and K.O. But um, when that fight broke out, they they moved at the perfect time, got in the zone and really gave themselves a chance. But um, just big hats off to, to K.O. Um, with some good shots and, and some clutch plays uh, uh, to get rid of P.O. underneath and, and land some long range shots uh, on Donata. So yeah. just impressive work. By, yeah, by I don't know how Nada went down. I missed that. It must have been, yeah, some good shots. It was like right shots. when Pio was causing problems, I think. But um, yeah, I, I didn't see exactly when the knock happened either. But uh, yeah, just very impressed with that kicked out team. Um, some some great work on Miramar by them. And um, hey, we're heading back to Arango for match five. Last match of the evening here, Blitz. The last match. And you, you made one last point before we go to break that. KO was in second place last match and then in first place. So that that is great oh, for yeah. them. Hopefully our scoreboard uh, has updated so we can take a quick little peek. Yeah, so we have we have the scoreboard, but we'll have to wait a little while for this game to update. So we'll we'll take a look after this game and, and just make sure that everything is refreshing properly. And we'll get this back to you with... three games, though, I think what we're looking at right now. This should be three games, but I don't know if this properly updated again it might still be stuck where it's at so we'll refresh that in between here and then we'll, we'll show you guys where we're at uh with the current current games and we'll get back to game five so we'll be back in just a few minutes guys ggs everybody ggs
Oh, <clears throat> excuse me. All right, we're back with the final game, game five of the day, our first day for the NA versus EU showdown. This is the EU side, and then we'll be back taking a break after this match and be back at 8 o'clock Eastern Standard Time for the NA event. We have our plane path going from Lepovka there to Primorsk, and quickly here, why we see some of the teams dropping, we're just going to show you guys the scoreboard. We'll bring up some of the other information after this because we might see a few hot drops here being the last game of the day. So far, we have Tenetic in the lead. This is after, this should be up to three games, at least so far, with Tenetic in the lead after their huge game with Code Red in second and Kinetic in third. So we got a little bit of a tongue twister there with Tenetic and Kinetic. But again, this is after three games. And then after this, we just have to wait a little bit for game four to update. And here we are. There's already some hot dropping action happening in Milta. Two teams, RMV and AE, have dropped here, maybe looking for some extra points off the bat in the last game of the day. Wow, crazy cycle two blitz with the plane path. It was not very likely for it to pull up to the high side since we finished down by, by, by Primorsk, excuse me, but this is a, a pretty interesting circle centering up on the swamp area on the west side of the map. And only one team really is in zone, and that's Platinum 7. The rest of the teams are, are going to have to work, work their way over from the east side. Yeah, such a great point. Because the bottom of the plane path was there, this was very low probability, right? And actually, may, might have went to the military base. So I'm surprised only K7 went down there. But a lot of teams jumped early, Stento. Look at the map right now. Everybody's on their east, like central to east side of the map. Uh, so this will yeah, be and I love that we're on this mill to hot drop because RMV is one of the people that we talked about in game one Their original drop is up on Severny and this plane path did not allow them to drop on Severny So RMV was forced into this location. They've already lost hacker and just um It just really kind of points out the fact that you know, if you're gonna choose a main drop like uh, Severny that you really are gonna have potentially, you know, your second drop might be on another team or something in RMV um handling it though if they've lost one member but deco wins a little 1v1 right there kind of evening the uh stakes here so far yeah and i just was switching through the members of rmv you might have mentioned this but takashi is not even with the team at all he's completely off there to the yeah, north i'm curious what their backup drop is because again we mentioned them dropping severity and how that might be tough on some of these more southern plane paths um and we're watching it and immediately uh, losing a, a couple members here or a, a, a little bit of a disheveled drop as you mentioned Takashi's just heading to zone potentially trying to get something early uh, This is such a weird zone that I think most teams are going to be under the impression that no one's really over there early zone and um, Yeah, I think an early rotation is, is going to pay off for a lot of these teams here Yeah, I have to imagine that RMV and AE didn't go through the whole leaderboards shouldn't be that far down so I wonder if they wanted to do this on purpose or just happened on accident sometimes you just can't really control it because you're already pretty far down right you know some some teams want to get in the action so i wonder what their strategy was there but you know we'll, we'll never know so we'll just see how this plays out for today takashi is five in five of our first day here the entire eu section will be 30 matches so day one you know, you obviously want to get out to a good jump, but we still got 25 matches over the course of the next three weeks to determine who's going to be in the top eight of this EU section moving on to the $4,000 finals. So lots of teams um, have already started that early rotation. RMV, Takashi, RLX. Seven is comfortable spread around Gatka, but um, the rest of the team is kind of still looting up uh, on this kind of southeast side of the map. Yeah, a few teams just waiting. P7, like you mentioned, in a good spot. And the Gaka area, NES, starting their rotation. As Stento mentioned, we have the 17 teams battling it out for EU here. And then we'll be back for NA. But NA is actually going to be working kind of in a group stage because we have 24 separate teams. So we'll be having an extra day of NA play to kind of whittle down the NA teams to where we will head into a playoff between the NA versus EU teams for the finals. $5,000 total in prizes across the next month, which is absolutely huge and already off to amazing action so far today for the EU squads.
Yeah, it's been such a blast to getting to know some of these new teams, uh, seeing some familiar faces and familiar squads trying to deal with the, these circles, which I think have been, again, kind of rough circles today. Um, not the type of stuff, you know, if you're actually down there on the battlefield that you're trying to see, it really does throw a wrench in your plans and you, it's the type of day you need a good IGL in your squad. Um, and I think we're seeing that from, from some squads in, in really good positions consistently, especially, you know, K KO um at the end of a couple miramars there in a row and we've seen torch take some good positions so lots of teams doing a very good job of prioritizing good position but th these um these circles have just been drastic today yeah code red right now is actually taking an emergency pickup early stento they did not waste any time doing this and they're landing on the solo of rmv all these here he's he sees the doors open so he knows Interesting. Just letting chat know that we have the scoreboards fixed now. Yeah, I, I don't think they, you know, they, they know the doors are open, but they haven't really located Takashi yet. No, Ollie playing smart. I'm also trying to see if anything else is happening. All the teams kind of rotating in circles coming in now. They found him. Takashi's got a four on one in his hand. What can he do, Blitz? I'm going to watch from his perspective to see. Wow, unfortunately, spectating just left the area. And, of course, we missed that. Sorry, guys. That was a little bit of a spectating bug. Sometimes that happens when you're watching people there. Ooh. He was proving to be a handful. He does take down one member, but just too much trying to deal with a four man all at the same time. Tried to get some mini spray in there. Not going to be able to get any points for his squad. A little bit of a broken round here in match five of the day for RMV, who have had a, a little bit of an up and down day. We've seen them do some heavy fragging, um, but not much end game success for RMV today. Another airlift here, Blitz. I think this is. If I'm not mistaken, K7 starting to drop their way into zone as well. I was going to say, they were pretty late at military base still. I was wondering, like, there was a slow rotation for them off of the, off of the island. And now they're going to take kind of a north spot here. So they're going to roll the dice. They do have a U.S. here, which is beautiful. They can get the, the hill here or take hospital if they want to. They don't know this, but hospital's empty right now. Some shots coming in from the, the east side of the island. Another team just took an airlift. This is toxic. They're landing right above RS here, Stento. We might yeah, see a member get Q knocked. Is in this compound below. I want to see what Qdex is up to, Blitz. I'm going to... Yeah, I he tapped into Qdex. Just got chap. Sly goes down from Pickle. TX is in a terrible spot. This was a really bad place to land on in between yeah, the two compounds. Both those kills. Uh, Full and the rest of the boys are trying to work their way into this compound. Full actually picked up a knock onto traits, but uh, there's just too much RS squad waiting for them there. And, you know, that kind of shows you the, the pros and cons of those airlifts, right, Blitz? We saw K7 take one one second earlier than those guys. And now they're sitting comfortable in zone with a couple extra kill points. Um, and unfortunate for Toxic EU, who have had a very impressive first day as well. Picking up heavy kills throughout the Urangles. Um, struggled a little bit throughout the Miramars, but um, that just shows you, the, again, the, the pros and cons of those airlifts. There was not really much they could do uh, because Qdex was in that compound and they landed in yeah. between uh, those two teams. So yeah, such a good point because we've mostly we've mostly seen them been, be used uh, beneficially. And right there, it, it definitely cost. I mean, they were eliminated right then then and there. And unfortunate loss from Torch here. They need a big game five. They they won a game. They've been playing well, but they also were out early in a game, and they lose Luca here, who's definitely been a strong player for them today, to Ruzi, who definitely, can, uh, Tenetic, with game three, they were in first place. So a team to watch right now, for sure. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty unfamiliar with this T1 squad, but I've been very impressed. Um, obviously, anyone who's dropping a 22 kill chicken dinner on Miramar is someone we're going to keep our eyes on. Uh, but they've been consistent as well. They're in good good spots. Uh, they, they fight well as a squad, and, and clearly they've got the skills. So um, I'm excited to watch T1 pr proceed throughout this league here. 
Uh, but Blitzel looks like a little bit going on, maybe in the swamp area. Looks like Winter Circle trying to deal with a solo for RMV, and they've got RLX hanging out on the north side, kind of watching as well. Yeah, so they got Ben spotted. They just took him down to just a fraction of health here. Ghost is going to maybe stun and push in. Got the stun. He's going to double stun here, playing it safe. And pull helps out. You know why we have like a quick law. I just want to show game four updated here in the scoreboard and kicked out, moved up four positions then. So I just want to show people the scoreboard. I've been seeing a lot of questions here um, in the stream. So we have Tenetic in first place with 44 points, followed by Code Red, Torch, kicked out, moved up again, seven spots to fourth place, and then Ace Esports at 31 points in fifth. So those are the teams to watch. Kinetic and Winter Circle just out of the top five right now. So... It's definitely get, of the leaderboard. definitely getting good there great to see a lot of teams involved so far we've had a bunch of different winners and and teams performing well which you like to see because for a while there's stento at least in na there were a few teams that were kind of taking over a little bit and now it's kind of flipped and definitely way more competition again which is good yeah i i again have just really enjoyed getting to know some of these new players and these new teams and, and have been nothing but impressed with what has been a very difficult day of map rotations um and again we're kind of dealing with another one right now like so much water still involved in this phase two zone like a third of the zone maybe and then the rest of it is kind of swamp and farmland in the center it's just so difficult to work with this um so it's been a little bit of a we've seen some more deaths earlier on in this game than other games because i think of the lack of area to work with here blitz 14 teams alive 53 players and we've just tapped into the uh 12 minute mark so, um, last game of the day, we saw a couple hot drops and some some unfortunate rotations, but this, this these zones have just been uh, very difficult for these players. Yeah, I love what K7 did. So, I'm kind of looking at the map right now. K7 moved down into this great compound in the center. Torch took their compound right next to RS here, uh, but K7 is such a great spot. Not the best compound to play out of, but position-wise... They're center and they're in in a good spot. So we'll see how they can play with this last game. Euro took that has taken the spot that a lot of the top esports teams like to take here at the antenna. Too big of a circle to know what direction it's gonna go in so far though. Yeah, absolutely. I'm a big fan of that spot. You, you should be able to keep your cars safe in the dips on top of that little antenna hill, um, as well as kind of get some good sight lines um, and the opportunity to pick up some early to mid game uh, frag points onto other players. So I love that spot that Euro's taken. I think that's where I would want to be with this circle right now. I think we can expect it. Um, if it's not this zone, the next zone is guaranteed to shift off of the water. So it's going to be interesting to see here in, in just under 10 seconds exactly what's going on. But the, the swamp land again in this farmland is, is going to make it very difficult for these teams to find something comfortable right now. And heavy south shift that Euro wow. team that we were talking about is not even in anymore when they were just basically center blitz. Uh, and this is favored uh, one of our winners from earlier on today, Code Red Gaming. Now it's just got like a crazy split up to like center spine of zone. They do. It looks like they're grouping up here, and KO has a kind of an interesting split as well. Excuse me. Yeah, we're going to start to see those teams on the north side. T1, Torch, uh, RS, Euro, Seven. All of these teams kind of trying to work their way into the same northeastern side of zone. Euro might be crashing RLX here, Blitz. It's just one member that's up on the golf ball hill here. And three members, excuse me, a full four man just crashed him. He's going to need help. If RLX head pain can hang on. Wow, he's got the... Just a minute here. He's, he's got a foldable shield me. and a shotgun stento. What year is it? I'm kidding. This is like a, a new thing that you'd see. The shotguns becoming more and more popular. And the foldable shield newer item in PUBG. The help is just on time, Blitz. Great time for Arlex to show up. And they have this nasty head glitch here. But it's just one of them, though. It's just Don there. Don Lee. Yeah, it, it, they've gotten a knock now. So this whole push has slowed down the... Uh, 
um, uh, what, what is this called? The, the fold out uh, shield. Fold out really shield. Slowed down and made it almost impossible for Euro to push. What a great but play since here. Was only one member of RLX. Now it's two. Now it's three. They're all on the ridge. Euro was able to get to four strong. Um, and P7, we have to keep an eye on them on the east side. They see the smoke. They heard the noise. They know what's going on over here. They're trying to get angles. Dawn. On the side of they got to get into the building now to help out a little bit. So they're pushing up. Let's. Don was trying to make his way in, but then the cars were blocking him. Seems like they're not sure how they want to approach. They need to make a decision quick here, though, Stento, because you're right. There are people on the way, and you know when you when you shoot shots, people people are coming. Don Lee goes down. Yeah, P7 is wasting no time. They want a third party. This has been a slow day Ooh. for P7. Undertaker the with a beautiful heady. Undertaker hears the noise, but... Great push from Euro there. And they come wow. down victorious. Two knocks, though, so they're trying to get the heels off. P7 is on the move, but they're not sure exactly what happened, so they're sticking to the ridge. They're not pushing yet. Yeah, playing a little, a little cautious here. Uh, personally, when I see knocks on both sides, I'm full sending that blitz. Uh, I'm not going to lie to you, but... I do appreciate the caution. They're, they're just going to kind of hang out on this ridge and take the location that RLX had. Euro, Jinzy had no idea that they had flanked this side. Wow. The comes out no, Sino. With a nice beam. Aggressive. He almost gets knocked himself. But now, and now it looks like one of the members from P7 is pushing on. He's got nades in his hand. The golf ball is slowly going to turn into... Uh, just a nade zone here. He does oh, get one with the vector. This is not the gun you want to be going up against close range here. No, I mean... I have an inside joke, pushing with a vector here. When you push with a vector, it's just a different push, right? If you have a if you have an AK here, push, yep. it's a way different push than having the vector. It definitely gives you a little bit of extra confidence pushing. A good jump down by Bosnian caught one of the members off guard for P7 there, but it's just too uh, big of a push here from P P7 altogether. They do lose no mercy, but now it's just uh, McVitsy here left. We're seeing lots of kills being picked up um, in the meantime. Torch taking down TXC in your kill feed. It's, yeah, it's just Mick Vitsy here behind the door. Now using the foldable shield to his advantage. Yeah, it's so funny. The, so many people have been hiding behind that shield. It's proved to be a very uh, useful way to block the stairs and block a push, you know? Yeah, and if you have I wonder if that's going to be a, a regular thing we see is, is when people take splits, if they're going to be starting to pick up these shields to be able to, you know, hold down second floors of buildings a little bit more uh, efficiently. I, I'm, no, it's I'm, honestly a great I play know. because once you get it out of your, you know, you hold it on, it, it kind of fills up your inventory. But once you put them down, they're gone. So why not take them? It works for a little while, but then they eventually take out the shield and Clyde gets up there. I think off the car, he might have taken the roof and takes out mcvitsy there but if you haven't tuned into esports in a while pubg has been adding in new features into the esports ranked landscape for a while they, they kept all these things out but now the emergency pickup is in there the foldable shield is in there um as we've seen them being utilized today and right now i'm watching edge two members knocked winter circle on a push normally winter circles together really you know decisive moves as a team but it looks like big dog's a little slow to react here Throwables coming in from Bueno and Pole. I'm going to tap into Pammy. He's the last one left to try to defend for his team. Gets a nice knock on to Pole. But he's getting shot from behind, it seems like, from NES. There is so much going on here, Blitz. I'm, I'm kind of trying to watch this from above. I, I see the angle that you've got. There's there's multiple members of Edge still up, and Reses are going... Reses are going off now. And there you go. It all happens really quick with a nade and a good push by Ghosts into the smoke. WC going to get back to four strong here. They've got only four kills, so that was really their first action today. More smokes are going out. But you're seeing uh, more action break off. We're going to see KO Benzi go out to NES here. And right now, I don't know if people are dropping in, but Code Red Gaming is about to get pushed. If you take a look at your map blitz, Code Red Gaming is getting pushed by AE and K7 and perhaps from the south side as well. Very interesting because this compound sometimes is hard to push. It's kind of in a valley here. So I'm really curious if anyone's actually going to kind of commit because I think K7 is going to hold out AE here and kind of stop that push. And then Code Red probably doesn't want to push out either. Tiro and Qdex look like they're getting into position to maybe push from the right side here, especially if they get a throwable knock. I'm not seeing too many lethals here. Kiss has two nades. Gav has three. 
so out of this side right now code red gaming lost one player keeps was uh, extended a little bit too far um and now it's a three man of ae four man of k7 and tor again is down to a three man here Dude, with a nice beam with on the barrel. cliff tries to get a shot but gets immediately knocked there on the trade gav is stunned right now trying to do something for his team waiting for the stun to eliminate gets caught jumping and immediately knocked here it's zero clutches up there gets two kills and he's gonna be able to get the revive here will code red make a pusher now is the time as soon as they saw that knock they probably should have left the building sento like you said teams being a little yeah, slow to they're, react they're on the move so, so they had the right idea i'm just not sure the ridge is going to play such a big factor here for k7 so it's going to need to be some good throwables that land here but Ooh, k7 now was the opposite happens it. Cocky goes down, which is the worst case scenario, and that nade was kind of overcooked there. So Ollie kind of goes back into the building and try to get a sight line from the window. But Cocky's already down, and K7 doesn't really need to push this yet. Really, this building rarely stays in, so K7 might get aggressive and try to push, or I could see them just staying on the north side and, and waiting kind of for Code Red having to come out on the east side, but we'll see. Yeah, absolutely. K7 doing a really good job of just playing as a four man there, and, and it's helped them win a couple oh, of these fights just by stacking. Sento T1 here. I'm on the north side of the zone. They're out of the circle here. Blue is pushing Infernix, who I think is the last one left for T1. They're a number one team. They're eliminated as the eighth team, Sento. So this could really give an opportunity. I mean, I know it's just day one, but this could really give an opportunity for a team to leapfrog them. Then they've already had a great day, but a little bit early for them to exit in the last game for sure so it was p7 that took them out now p7's kind of being held out here by kayomi who already took one of them down and really just needs to be careful that doesn't make too much noise causing someone else to push i really don't think there's anyone in the area who can really get an angle on on kayomi so it's kind of just a, a 1v1 gatekeep happening on this side of zone um, we might see some action breakout between winner's circle and nes nitrous esports on this south side of the swamp it's a very interesting uh situation that's about to break out here night uh, nes has got the ridge right next to winter circle so i i think this is about to uh circle just shifted west yeah rs is preventing nes from from grouping up and making this push easy um, so, so NES really have to reconsider here, and they're, and they're kind of uh, quite literally in between a rock and a hard place here with RS looking down, um, and WC in the swamp kind of just holding them out. So, gonna gonna be tough for them to find a location here. I think they have some cars still in play, but the long range third party is just just bugging them nonstop. Yeah, pickle is putting them in a pickle here. RS, you know, great spot to third party here. Look, there's a solo member of KO. Kind of to the... that snipe, that snipe right there by denial onto one of the WC members. He can still see them actually. This thirst might come out. It might have opened a gate here for NES to push into the swamp. I'm not sure they realize this is WC here and that knock has happened. It looks like Spirits does realize that and is pushing onto this. He's just trying to figure out where the knock happened. He's going to see it soon here, Blitz. Yeah, now's the time for them to push. I think they're like not fully committing here. Now's the time to get those smokes out and just push this completely. It'd be be a pretty good play to smoke to the left there but now they're kind of questioning it and actually pushing back here they need to move those since they're not in zone now the smoke's finally yeah, I, coming I out agree. i i think they they understood that one of the members in front of them got knocked they, they needed to be a little bit more aggressive and i think the second guessing is, is going to come back to bite them but they do have time they do have a little bit of cover but there are so many third party angles just kind of watching this scene um, that I think they want to take this fight with WC sooner than later, so they have something to work with. And they do have smokes available. We just kind of scrolled through here. Zero kills to their name, though, Sento. So now they just lost a member there. That's Molf. Yeah, Tyro picking up the kill from super long range to the west side. Um, and yeah, probably, you know, looking from above, like like we have the opportunity. It was probably the play to, to kind of play that a little bit more aggressive, but... Pretty tough to figure out where that knock was. And they had Big Dog on Winter Circle kind of covering the push. So it's just a really interesting dynamic and, and some good uh, teamwork by WC to get strong uh, back to four strong there. Um, one member from KO here is getting pushed by uh, RS at this shack. It's not going to be enough. Pickle actually takes him down. And we're down to our final 
four teams of the evening and it is three full teams and one three man blitz yeah this is probably the most packed finish we've seen a lot of teams i feel like in the previous matches have been kind of straggling along here almost a full final four lobby rs with another nice snipe let's look at the zone it's just it's just farm field one team's gonna get pulled out of the swamp. One team's gonna get pulled off of the hill. One team's gonna get pulled out of the compound. Everyone's gonna eventually have to leave what they have right now for their cover. Um, but unfortunately for NES, trades are going out. Paul is knocked, but they do clean it up. Picking up another three kills is Winter Circle. And they're starting to put together a very good day here. If they can close this out, they might be able to jump towards the top, perhaps even into first place um, for Winter Circle here. Yeah, right now, Winter Circle has seven total kills k7 has 10 and rs has six all teams remaining doing a pretty good job so far in this round to pick up some points ghost with some great slr shots across the map almost takes down one member for rs who got zone here it was winner circle winner circle got trades zone traits went for a sly flank here but then didn't get the shots now the nades are coming in. he's gonna go down that was a really risky early flank i think he had a good spot and he went for the shot now it backfired k7 is actually gonna steal that kill i think yeah, this... winner circle got the best zone here i think they have a little bit of their farm ridge to work with but how dominant of a spread can k7 or rs get uh, it's going to be tough here, Blitz, because RS has to come off that hill. k 7s going to eventually have to come out of that compound. And uh, Winter Circle is going to be watching it all go down from a safe location. Ooh. So it's Boldy, interesting. That's his second knock with that Bolty. He's been putting it to work. Denial putting on a Bolty clinic right now. Yeah, and I'm surprised that one didn't hit right there. So I was kind of taking a look at the field here. So we missed that snipe. I apologize. I think RS has a little bit of a dip in front of them, potentially. I don't know if it's in. And while Winter Circle has the best spot now, I think the next zone will leave that little ditch they're in. So I really think it's going to come down to if RS or K7 gets a really good spot here. RS Spree already trying to grab a spot, but then gets knocked. This could be bad for Pickle and Spree here trying to get this revive. All comes down to what? K7 decides to do. Kizza here could make it. I love a... what Bueno's doing as well, Blitz. He's spread out from his team so they don't all get trapped into that. Yeah, ridge. oh, that's He's smart. Big play from Bueno. When big they play. fight K7. Kizza's got a big nade onto Spree and Pickle. He got the knock on Spree. Pickle is super low. He knows that they're there, though. No more lethals for Kizza. He's got an 11 smoke stent, though. That's just built different for comp play. This spot by bueno is so valuable qdex is here though he gets bueno oh, out we just caught that we just caught qdex hitting that spot he's got three lethal so he might be able to kind of just flush him out here Big rs got two up QDX. again though gav is trying to use his lethals he's got three to finish off he finally they re spree and this second nade should take out pickle it does like i said i thought k7 here would be able to do this they're able to take out they're firing on all cylinders blitz who are we kidding they're picking up all the kills in all directions long range close range they've got 14 right now and it's qdex with another big nade that picks up two of them they have so many throwables right now stento at this portion of the game that they're really using it to their advantage kizza gets blindsided though from the right from really the mg3 from pole. pole yeah amazing flank by pole there he might have just Totally changed the outcome of this game here. K7 was in full control. Now they've got Big Dog and Pole trying to deal with Gav, Tyro, and Qdex all working their way off the west side. It's just farm field though, Blitz. A couple hay bales, a couple trees, a couple slight dips here and there. And Polinar is in a very, very good spot over here. I'm just surprised that nobody has any kind of spray scope right now. Everybody on K7 is on the red dot. Gav has spotted Big Dog with the mini, and he, if he pushes him too much to the left here, he might Pole get spotted. In, Blitz. Oh, another nade from Qdex. Qdex. Wow. Oh my gosh. Winter Circle Qdex has to be. making it happen on the far side. I was watching Pole try to flank these guys here, Blitz. He couldn't get the job done. K7 just holds way too strong, and what was a slightly modest day for them turns into a massive 
and chicken dinner led by Qdex with a 10 piece blitz 18 kills in the chicken dinner winner's circle with a tough a tough push out of the swamp there they did pick up seven kills in the second place and rounding out our top three in match five of the day is uh the retired sinners i believe is their name with six kills Wow, Center, we're going to bring it to the end game screen here with me and you. What I want to say there is that, you know, if you're K7, you almost have to be laughing right there if, you, if you're you Qdex. I think he got three of the last four kills with a nade on Winter Circle. So if you're Winter Circle, they're probably like, how many nades do you guys have? Because they, they <laughs> re-knocked a couple of the guys at RS with multiple nades. They probably threw, you know, six, seven, eight nades there in that final area. Um which, you know, nades are powerful. It's important to have them. Sometimes you don't need as much ammo and things as, as you think you need, right? And ha having those nades, especially for the hay bales and everything like that can be huge. But uh, amazing game for them. And I want to remind everybody that K7 was actually out of the top five there. Again, this is just day one for EU. Um, but we'll have to wait a little bit until we see the update for, for game five. But K7, as we pull up the scoreboard here really quickly, they were in seventh place. That was a monster game for them. They're going to move up really far there. T1 was out kind of early, so I'm definitely excited to see how things shake yeah. out. K7 was in seventh. That's going to jump them close to the top, but but some several of those teams did, did decent again, in, including Winner's Circle picking up some points. So um, Kinetic 7 quite literally doubling their points for the day in that one match there is, is probably the, the the big focal point of the end of the day. But um, we've seen so many impressive teams out here. Tenetic 1 re really catching our eye. Um, Kicked Out, who I'm totally unfamiliar with, just blowing me away today with, with their plays. And, and um, again, we've seen Code Red and Torch do this for a while. They're right up towards the top. And um, just so many teams to keep an eye on after one match here, Blitz excuse me, one day of matches here. Yeah, for sure, because we've been used to doing the weekly series where everything kind of wraps up after one day. We have to remember that, you know, this Not is going to be going time. on for um, a little while <laughs> now. We're, we're going to be doing this for the next few weeks and then head into playoffs and then for the finals. We also have um, some some kill leader information. Again, this is just up to game four. We still have to wait for game five to update. T1 with two members in the top top five there of the kill leaders. And then for damage here... We are going to see Torch Fizz number one for damage. And then obviously oh, we this saw will... what that guy was doing on Miramar to Code Red Gaming. He was an absolute problem out there with the AUG in his hand. So just some impressive individual and team play coming from this EU comp side today. Uh, it, was, it was such a treat to get this event started, Blitz. Absolutely. Um, that's just how, you know, we'll, we'll be back here in uh, about an hour and a half. Ladies and gentlemen, same station uh blitz five and friends twitch.tv and um we've got the na section kicking off tonight we're a little more familiar with some of these guys um it's going to be a hotly contested one we've got 24 teams on the na side we'll be seeing uh, i believe groups a and b tonight um so 16 of them will be battling it out uh in the first five games as you can see there uh north american is broken into these three groups and um We'll be back here at 8 p.m. tonight, Blitz. I need to get a, a, some dinner and a, like a like a, some fresh air. And uh, again, I'm very excited to, to be back here in 90 minutes. Yeah, absolutely. So just so people know, because I saw a lot of questions in the chat, for Monday and Tuesday, EU will be starting at 3 p.m. Eastern. So for the UK, that's at 8 p.m. UK time. And then NA will be starting at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So 3 p.m. Eastern for EU, 8 p.m. We'll go all the way till now, and then we'll have a break in between. So we'll be back in a little bit. Thank you guys for sticking around. Also, this was just the first broadcast. We'll be working out some minor kinks and stuff like that. So thank you for bearing with us, and hopefully we'll see you guys tonight. GG saw the teams out there, and my co-host, Stento. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed day one so far, EU. All right, yeah, everybody. Absolutely, guys. Thank you so much. We'll see you uh, at 8 p.m. Eastern Sharp for the NA section. Enjoy the rest of your days, and we'll see you soon. GG's.